This is your sports TV station in Lorraine, WLCS TV 20. Welcome to Lorraine's Field of Dreams. We're at Pipe Yard Park for a Lake Erie League High School baseball game between the Crosstown rivals, the Southview Saints, and the Admiral King Admirals. Admiral King in this big game comes in with a record of 16-3 overall. They are 7-0 in the Lake Erie League atop the Erie Division. The Southview Saints just behind them at 13-4 overall, 5-1 in the Lake Erie League in the Erie Division. These two outstanding teams atop the Erie Division of the Lake Erie League, and they are experiencing tremendous high school baseball seasons in 2007. Rob Polinski from WEOL Radio. Glad to come on over to WLCS-TV uh, Channel 20 and show you uh, tonight's game with the assistance of Joe Bach, our home plate oper or, uh, camera operator and director. Dan or Don uh, Jacobin will be uh, getting the pitches for you at third base and over at first base, Bob Schlembaker. We're glad you could join us. Should be a tremendous high school baseball game. These two teams played on Monday evening Admiral King got a ninth inning, uh, eight to six win over South View. So these two longtime rivals will have their second game of the season here at the brand new Pipe Yard Park uh, at Campana Park uh, in Lorraine. Just a beautiful evening for high school baseball as we believe this is the first game uh, high school baseball wise that is under the lights in the history of Lorraine County. The two uh, head coaches are out there uh, uh, shaking hands out there with the home plate uh, or with the uh, umpires, I should say at home plate as they are getting the instructions. Brad Turnus, the head coach of Southview and uh, John Acasey is out there in his first year with Admiral King. We'll take this time out. When we return, we'll have our first pitch. It's Southview and Admiral King from Pipe Yard Park on WLCS TV 20. We're back after these messages. Living with diabetes is the pets. When I wake up, the first thing I have to do is check my blood sugar. I just want to feel like all the other kids without pricking my fingers or injecting myself with insulin. Diabetes is rough on my whole family. When I was diagnosed, my mom couldn't stop crying. But imagine a cure. Right now, as many as three million children and adults are living with type one diabetes. They will never outgrow it. Some will face complications like kidney failure, blindness, and heart disease. That's why the science the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation is supporting is so critical. Imagine a cure. Now, as you can see, the Admirals have taken the field defensively, so let's set the lineup for the Southview Saints. They are today's visiting team, again, under Coach Brad Turnus. Their team batting average coming into the ballgame is 325, and uh, their lineup they will go with Chris Garcia, right fielder. Chris, a junior, batting 400 with a homer and eight RBIs. Batting second for the Saints is senior left fielder Edwin Ortiz. Edwin with a homer and six RBIs, sporting a 326 average. Ryan Valentin, the senior shortstop, leads him with three homers, has 16 RBIs and a 407 batting average. Robert Perkins will bat cleanup. The senior catcher with a homer and 10 RBIs, batting 392. Batting fifth is third base senior Eric Feliciano. Eric at 404, he has eight RBIs on the campaign. Batting sixth is Justin Miller, senior center fielder, 231 average and 14 RBI. Cameron Bryant, a designated hitter, the junior with a homer and 16 RBIs, batting seventh tonight, batting 237. Batting eighth is Corey Martinez, a first baseman junior, 246 average and nine RBIs on the season. And rounding out the lineup, Michael Rosario, junior second baseman, a homer, 13 RBIs, and a 326 average. They'll be up against Sean Buckholz. Sean is 3-0 in 29 innings pitch for Lorraine Admiral King. The senior with 26 strikeouts, 14 walks, giving up eight earned runs, and has a 2.48 ERA. And uh, Coach Akasi telling me that uh, Sean is his, uh, basically, uh, he and Colin Wright are the top two pitchers for the Admirals. Chris Garcia is set to step in. The right-hand batter steps in, and we're just about set to get underway.
Buckholtz looks into J.T. Feldkamp at tonight's first pitch. You can see it's low and inside for ball one. We'll set the Admiral's defense for you here in the top of the first inning. And there's a called strike, evens the count at one and one. At first base is Cameron Zatala. At second base, Cody Buckholtz, that's Sean's brother. At shortstop is junior Matt Comer. And at third is Colin Wright, a junior. The one and one that is outside two and one gets away from senior catcher J.T. Feldkamp. And in the outfield, Chad Hall, a sophomore in left. It's Matt Toth, a junior in center field. And out in right field tonight for the Admirals is Tom Sigmund. He is a junior. That's high and tight. It's three balls, one strike to today's leadoff batter, Chris Garcia. Swing and a miss, and the count is full. Three balls, two strikes. Garcia steps back into the batter's box. As you see, swung on a miss for strike three. So Buckholtz went down 3-1, then he comes back, gets the strikeout, and tonight's first out. So one out for the Saints in the top of the first, and now right-hand batter Edwin Ortiz. Left fielder, a senior, again, a 326 average and a homer and six RBIs for Edwin. Buckholtz gets that one over for a called strike. In it to cut of the grass is third baseman Colin Wright. Maybe anticipating a bunt. The 0-1, that one swung on and fouled out of play. It's 0-2. So Sean Buckholtz quickly out in front of Edwin Ortiz. The Admiral outfield straight away. Medium depth. Pitch that's high and outside, 1-2. and two. Colts' next offering again is a bit high. It's two and two. Flag out in right center field. Blowing in is the breeze coming off the lake, I guess you'd say from the northeast a little bit. The 2-2 two -two pitch. That's high, and the count runs full. So for the second batter in a row for the Saints, they are looking at a full count. That one's a called strike on the outside corner. So Buckholtz. First two batters have taken them to the full counts before striking out. Now if Ryan Valentin will bat, the senior shortstop. Ryan with a 407 average. He leads the Saints three home runs and 16 RBIs. Sean Buckholtz first pitch. That one's inside 1-0. Again, Joe Bach, Don Jacobin, Bob Schlumbaker, the three men who were taking the camera of the pitchers for you so you can see this. Pitches a call strike, evens the count at one and one. Swing and a miss, count is one and two. So Buckholtz is one strike from striking out the side here in the top of the first. Robert Perkins awaits on deck. That one's lifted into the, to the right side of the infield. Coming into foul territory is Cameron Zatala, and he runs over to the fence and cannot make the catch as it just went off his glove. They're right in front of the Southview dugout. You saw the breeze that time take that ball away. Cameron Zatala kind of ran out of real estate over there in front of the Southview dugout and wasn't able to hang on to it. So the count remains one and two. I saw Bob scrambling. and I thought he, uh, he he probably thought it was heading toward him. Schlembaker moved on that, Joe? Yep. Wow. Well, it's only the first inning. He's not sleeping yet. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even say it. Swung out a miss for a strike three, and Buckholtz strikes out the side. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. After half an inning of play, it's south you nothing. Admiral King coming to bat. You're watching high school baseball on WLCS, Lorraine City Schools Television Channel 20. Every year, thousands of lives are saved through services provided by the Red Cross. Blood drives, disaster relief efforts, providing food and clothing, first aid, 
CPR, and AED classes. And all of this is made possible by donations from people like you. To offer your financial support, please contact your local American Red Cross chapter today. Home half of the first inning for the Lorraine Admiral King Admirals, they'll send up Matt Toth, Cody Buckholtz, and Sean Buckholtz. Toth, the junior, the center fielder, batting 300, nine RBIs. As a team, the Admirals are batting 327 on the season. Left hand batting Matt Toth, awaiting the first offering from Cameron Castro, the junior right hand pitcher from the Saints, and it's over for a called strike. Cameron Castro, a three and one record for the junior. 20 innings pitched, he struck out 21, walked nine, giving up seven earned runs, and has a very good 2.45 ERA. The junior, junior hurler with his second pitch, that one's off the corner, it evens the count at one and one. We'll set the Saints defense here for you. But first, Castro looks into his catcher, Robert Perkins, and here's the 1-1. One, one. There's a called strike, one and two. At first base is junior Corey Martinez. At second for the Saints, Michael Rosario, a junior. At shortstop, senior Ryan Valentin. And at third is senior Eric Feliciano. Castro with the one, two to Toth. That one's just off the outside corner a bit. Evens the count at two and two. The catcher is senior Robert Perkins. Again on the mound, it's Cameron Castro. Left to right field, Edwin Ortiz in left. Justin Miller, a senior in center. Chris Garcia, a junior, is in right field. And that one's ripped into left field. That is going to be a base hit. And it's going to get past Ortiz up against the fence. Toth getting the second base. As Ortiz fumbles around with the ball, he's going to try to get the third. He slides in for a triple. So Matt Toth gets the third on the three base hit. And right away, the Admirals with a runner in scoring position. That one was fading away from Ortiz. The wind kind of pushing it towards the line. Nothing Edward could come up, do with it. And it rolled all the way to the wall as it got by him. When he went back there, he kind of fumbled around with it. Toth never stopped, went to third. I suppose you could give him a double and an air, but I just went ahead and gave Matt a triple. We'll ask Joe Bach what he thinks. Ah, that was a triple. Okay, thanks. First pitch to Cody Buckholtz is a called strike. Cody, junior, second baseman, 365 average, 13 RBIs for Cody Buckholtz. His brother, Sean, today's pitcher, awaits on deck. Castro with the 0-1 pitch. That one's going to be chopped down to third. Coming up with it is Feliciano. He'll throw to first. Not in, or not in time. The throw was high. Corey Martinez went up to get it. Could not come down in time, so you got an air on the throw on Feliciano. That allows Buckholz to get the first, but Matt Toth could not get off third base because the uh, ball was hit right towards Matt. He stayed at third. So runners on the corners, you give a throwing air to uh, Feliciano, and that allowed Buckholz to get the first. So now Sean Buckholz comes up. 306 average, two homers, five RBIs for the senior pitcher. Pitch is high and outside, ball one. And it'll be interesting to see here if Coldy Buckholtz is running at first base, and if so, will the Saints throw through, or what will they do? Matt Toth dances off third base a little bit. Castro comes set, the pitch high and inside, 2-0. and oh. So the Saints in a jam here in the bottom of the first. Sean Buckholtz, Jim Allen telling me that uh, he is signed uh, to play next year at Notre Dame College in Cleveland. The 2-0, that one's going to be uh, lifted into foul territory. Running over is the first baseman. Did he make the catch? He did. Nice job over there right in front of the Saints dugout by Corey Martinez to record the first out. That's a heck of a play by Martinez. So that'll be the first out of the inning. And now J.T. Feldkamp will come up, and J.T. He's hot. He sure is, Joe. He leads the Admirals with 25 RBIs, a 563 average for the senior catcher. Cleanup hitter. Where the Saints would love to get a ground ball and try to turn two here, but Feldkamp, it'll he's be tough a, to do that. He's a tough out. No doubt. Again, 563 batting average. He was the... Uh Uland Award winner at the uh, Sports Hall of Fame banquet last night. You know, I heard that on Jim Allen's report today. 
course, the Lorraine Sports Hall of Fame banquet last night. Pitch, that's a called strike. Heading down to second base as the ball gets through. And getting all the way over to third on that bad throw is Coldy Buckholtz. So there's an error on the Saints allowing uh, Joe. Is that an error on the catcher? Who would we give the error to there? I'd give it on a catcher. So E2. That throw was high. That let Cody get to third, and scoring was Matt Toad. So they did send Buckholtz down to second. He was trying to draw a throw so that Toth could score. And the throw was errant, got it into center field, and that lets Buckholtz get all the way to third base. The Saints with two errors here in the bottom of the first inning, and they trail 1 0. So that takes the double play away. It gives the Admirals the lead. And now JT Feldkamp is up with a 1 1 count. Pitch that bounces in two and one. Good job by Robert Perkins. I got you, Joe. Did, did you guys go down and, and film that last night? I did. Yep, I was there. So the uh, people in the rain can see that uh, yeah, at a future date it. on WLCS. That, that's a summertime program that'll okay. that'll air. Uh... There's going to be a chopper to short. Valentin comes up with it, then he boots it. Run scores. Felt camp safe. Third error of the first inning. Wow. On Southview. I think Valentin was trying to, you know, come up with it and going to try to throw Buckholtz out and at the plate. Couldn't come up with it, and Admirals lead two to nothing. Felt camp at first. Colin Wright will come up. Colin, another good RBI man, the junior third baseman with 20 RBI and a 4.48 average. Pitches a called strike. What were some of the highlights last night, Joe, that the people are going to be able to, to see later on this summer? Uh, you know, probably, you know, the, I think the best part was um, the class of the uh, 1962, the Admiral King uh, football team mm -hmm. that went in as a team. That one's lifted to left field in the short left field. Racing over the shortstop in foul territory, Ryan Valentin makes the put out, and that was not an easy play. Good running put out by Ryan Valentin, the shortstop. And the spokesman for that team was uh, WEOL's own uh, Tomo. Bob Tomaszewski. I, yep. I believe he was a member of that ball yes, club, he was. was he not? Yep. Yeah, I made him some uh, DVDs of some old films that they uh, found somewhere. <laughs> there you go. So, Chad Hall steps in for the Admirals. One home run, 11 RBIs for the sophomore left fielder. He'll chop it down the third baseline. Scooped up, long throw by Feliciano. Not in time, an infield hit for Chad Hall. So Boy. Hall is safe at first. That will let Feldkamp get to second. Heck of a job down there by Eric Feliciano as he probably took away a double by picking up that ball but could not stand up and throw Hall out in time. Now Tom Sigmund, the seventh man to bat for the Admirals in the first inning. Junior right fielder, 11 RBIs and a 476 average for the left hand swinging Tom Sigmund. Two on and two out in the home half of the first. Admiral King out in front, 2 0. That's low ball one. Cameron Castro throwing a lot of pitches in this first inning. The pitch. High and outside, 2-0. Oh. Yeah, it was good to see Joe Tate there, uh, just uh, how the schedule worked out with the Cavs having uh, uh, some free time since the New Jersey uh, Toronto series has gone long. Uh, he was able to uh, MC the event last night. Great. There's a called strike. It's 2-1. and one. Two balls, one strike to Tom Sigmund. Pitch just off the outside corner, three and one as the wind picks up a little bit here at Pipe Yard Park. Nice crowd here tonight on this Friday evening to see these two teams play under the lights. Again, they played Monday night. Admiral King won eight to six over at Southview. Pitch that one's going to be chopped off the plate, and Castro watches it roll foul, and uh, he picks it up alertly for a foul ball. 
Yeah, also, uh, actually, afternoon, uh, we covered the uh, Southview King uh, Garfield track meet. Really? So that'll be on TV20 coming up here uh, in the near future. We haven't done a track meet. It's a lot of work. We had uh, four cameras, and there's a lot of editing involved because all the uh, events. So uh, I could last, imagine. Last one we did was 2003, and uh, so I figured it was time to do another one. There you go. A lot of work, though. Three balls, two strikes. The pitch. That one's going to be hit to Valentina Short. Comes up with it. Double pumps. Throws the first just in time for the out. So for the Admiral King Admirals, unofficially they get two runs on two base hits. There were three Southview errors and two were left. After one inning of play, it's Lorraine Admiral King 2, Lorraine Southview nothing. You're watching High School Baseball on WLCS TV 20, Lorraine City Schools TV. Nuclear weapons materials stored in laboratories and other facilities, some protected by just a chain link fence. Terrorists are trying to steal these materials to make a nuclear bomb and attack us here. We need to stop them at the source by locking down the materials. There is something you can do to protect America. Visit saferworld.org. Be part of stopping a catastrophe before it happens. Top of the second inning, a pitch to Robert Perkins. is a curveball that doesn't, and it's high and inside 1-0. Robert Perkins, Eric Feliciano, Justin Miller. The fourth, five, and six batters for Southview. The state trail two to nothing. Another inside pitch that goes behind Perkins, two and zero. Oh. Sean Buckholtz on the mound for Admiral King. Perkins, 392 average for the senior catcher. A homer and 10 RBIs. That one's a called strike. It's two and one. Brad Turnus, the head coach down there in the third base box. One of his uh, assistants at first. 2-1, a swung out of miss, evens the count at 2-2. Two and two. <laughs> Getting it all set there, Joe? Yeah, somebody walk, walks right in front of the camera and then climbs over the seats. <laughs> Never fails. 2-2 two, two pitches off the plate outside, 3-2. and two. A little warmer for you here tonight than it was the other day, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, a little bit. 3-2. That one's going to be swung on and fouled into the screen right behind us. It's actually not too bad. It's just the wind that's, uh, of course, I don't I don't know if you feel it too much being up in a press box. Well, I've got the window open so we can get some of the sound. So, yeah, it's, it gets any colder. Teresa will probably have me pull the window down, so we might have to do that. Here's the pitch. That one's going to be chopped to second base. Coming up with it is Cody Buckholtz. He'll throw it at first. Not in time. Robert Perkins hustling, beat it out. On a close play at first base and infield hit. Boy, the catcher really had it going that time down the line. And his hustle gets an infield hit, Joe. I didn't think he was going to beat that one out. Boy, there's been some, uh, some close plays here. And now coming up will be Eric Feliciano, senior third baseman batting 407. Southview with their first base runner of the game. They trail 2-0 here in the top of the second. Feliciano bunts, but it's foul, 0-1-1. Of course, Southview trying to get a win so they can uh, tie Admiral King with one loss each in league play. The Admirals, if they get the win, they are going to be undefeated with a two-game lead with three to play in league play. Again, it looks like Feliciano wants to bunt. He will get it down. Sean Buckholtz comes off the mound. He'll have to go to first for the out. So the sacrifice is successful. And uh, Feliciano is out. Getting down to second base is Robert Perkins. Yeah, surprisingly, uh, I think King was seated seventh, if I'm not uh, mistaken, in the upcoming uh, uh, sectionals. And um, Southie was uh, seated, I believe, third. I think you're right. Justin Miller stands in. That's outside and high 1-0. A lot, now, of, lot of great teams, yeah. that, and that's going to be just a fantastic. Uh, exactly. You've got the defending state champ, Strongsville, there with Brunswick. 
Elyria High. Amherst is having an outstanding season. A lot of good teams in that sectional district that will start, I believe, in about a week or so. And that one it is, is going to be a foul tip as it went off the bat of Justin Miller. That inside pitch, it looked like it hit Miller, but it did not. Hits the bat of Justin. That's a foul ball. Again, we're at Pipe Yard Park in Lorraine. CSU making their home here now, playing baseball games. We were here a couple weeks ago doing their inaugural game here. Swung on a miss to Miller. That makes the count one and two. And Joe, the viewers uh, in Lorraine who want to see that, would we tape that maybe a couple weeks ago? That'll be that'll be coming up it's, here yeah, on it's TV coming up, 20. Yeah, it's coming up soon. <laughs> we this is our one of our busy times of the season with concerts and end of year programs. There's going to be a single up the middle coming up with it is Matt Toth around or third is Perkins to score. He gets in to throw down the second will be not in time a single an RBI and Justin Miller takes second on the throw and the Saints score their first run and trail it two to one. So Toth trying to throw home never had a chance to get Perkins. An RBI single for Justin Miller and for Justin his 15th RBI of the season. And now Cameron Bryant, the junior designated hitter, will come up. And the Saints on that throw home getting Miller to scoring position. They have the uh, tying run at second base in scoring position. Important here, Joe, for Southview to come back after Admiral King got those two runs in the bottom of the first. Yep, it's always important to answer and uh the first time around, what it, it was, it was a fantastic game. And I think we're going to be in for much of the same tonight. Mm -hmm. Swinging a miss, strike one to Cameron Bryant. Maybe those errors on Southview, and they're not used to playing here. I don't know if either team gets to practice here at all, Joe. Uh, but maybe just being here for the first time and some jitters playing here in front of the big crowd. I'm sure they'll settle down, is my point, and play much better the rest of the way. And, and, and you are correct in saying big crowd. <laughs> just take a look. Uh, I mean, how it's really filled in since uh, since, since the opening of the game. I mean, there are, there are qu quite a bit of people here. It's just amazing. Pitch is high, two and two. There's more people here right now than when we did the CSU game here a couple weeks ago. You know, it does look like that. <laughs> and well, these two teams are playing great baseball. Two of the best teams in Lorain County. Two rivals. That pitch gets away from uh, J.T. Feldkamp and getting down to third base on the wild pitch is Justin Miller. Brian Corey, the Rain City Schools Athletic Director, stomping on up. We'll go ahead and get you set there. Here's the pitch. That one's going to be fouled off. Brian Corey, Lorraine City Schools Athletic Director. What a beautiful night for baseball. Great crowd. We're just commenting, Joe and I, on the, the beautiful crowd here you've got here tonight. Oh, it's unbelievable. Actually, there's a line of about 30 people right now outside waiting to get in. And uh, saw a couple more cars driving up. And uh, it's just an unbelievable day for uh, the city of Lorraine. Got a great uh, battle here with Buck Holtz and Cameron Bryant. Bryant keeps following them off into the screen. Top of the second inning, Admiral King out front, two to one. They have a runner at third with one out in the top of the second. The pitch from Buckles swung on again. That one's foul tipped at the plate. You talk about a great day for the city of Lorraine. Uh, I'm sure, Brian, for you, this has to be a, a, a fun day for you and, uh, you know, a hectic day as well. But just great to see these kids playing in front of a big crowd under the lights here at this beautiful facility. I don't think you could have painted a better picture. I mean, both teams are... Uh, this is obviously an extremely important game to go on top of it with sure. uh, both of them competing for a conference championship. And, you know, this could be the, the deciding game here. So uh, it's, it's great. It's great to have the, the perfect situation with a game that matters and beautiful day. And uh, I'm just happy for the kids. Justin Miller at third base. Here's the pitch. That one's going to be chopped to short. Coming up with it is Comer. The throw to first. Not in time. An infield hit. Beating it out is Cameron Bryant. And getting an RBI single, we're tied at two as Justin Miller is able to come down from third. So far, things are playing out the way I want it to play out. I wanted a tie game, 
going into the seventh, and then whatever happens, happens. Gotcha. I, uh, I don't know the history of baseball at Admiral King or Southview, and I'm not trying to put you on the spot either, but I would imagine mm -hmm. with if King at 16 and 3, Southview 13 and 4, between these two teams, this has got to be one of their most successful springs uh, for the high schools combined, just having an outstanding spring for high school baseball. You know, it's funny because I brought up to uh, head coach uh, John Acasey, it would be in his first year. And I says, we're, we're going to have to go, I'm going to have to go back and see what uh, the record is for most wins in a season for Admiral King. And immediately uh, he told me if I do that, he's going to be extremely upset because he doesn't know, he doesn't care. He says after the season's over, we'll have to worry about that stuff. Right now he's doing it game by game. And he doesn't want uh, people like wonderful uh, Teresa over there putting it on the, <laughs> the, the, the newspaper. <laughs> I know she's over there. So I said, I will back off on that until after the season's over with. Corey Martinez setting the step in, the junior first baseman. 246 average, nine RBIs. We are tied at two in the top of the second inning. Runner at first is Cameron Bryant with one out. Buckholtz with a pitch. That one's just off the outside corner. Or I'm sorry, it's a called strike, 0 and 1. Both teams will be competing in the sectional district later on as they, uh, you know, there could be a third meeting and that would be a great situation because that would mean they would be in the district championship. They're on opposite sides of the bracket. That's a long way away and a lot of quality teams in that sectional district, Brian. Oh, I agree. I mean, I, you know, obviously my frame of reference for most things is basketball. Sure. And, you know, I, you know I, I look at that right there and I try to think back in regards to basketball and I can't remember uh, a sectional district ever being that tough, uh, top to bottom. I mean, when you have the the sixth and seventh seeded team having the ability to be able to get out of there, I mean, that's pretty unbelievable. One ball, two strikes to count here to Corey Martinez. The pitch. That's just off the outside corner. Evens the count at two and two. Strongsville, the defending state champs in that, as long with Brunswick. Amherst having a good season. You've got uh, Elyria in that sectional district. A lot of good baseball teams. Oh, yeah, no doubt about it. And, and you know, obviously the ideal situation is... Uh, Ball's lifted into short left field. Not being able to make the catch is Chad Hall, but they do get the force out at second base because... Uh, Corey, or, uh, Cameron Bryant had to wait. He thought that uh, Chad Hall would come up with it. So there are two outs in the inning. Teresa, don't ask me. I don't know what you even do for that. Errors? Um, I'd have to say it was an error. I think that was a catchable ball. That's an error fielder's choice, isn't it? See, that's what I'm saying. I didn't know because you still got the runner out at second. So Joe Box says error and fielder's choice. I'm going to go with what Joe Box says. Teresa Newhoff agrees with you, Joe. And <laughs> I'm not a baseball you. guy, but I thought uh, airfield. Well, it could be. You could be right. Michael Rosario will step in, junior second baseman, the ninth batter for the Saints. He'll left that one in the right field, giving a chase as Top Sigman. Sigman is going to not be able to get there in time as it fa falls in foul territory for strike one. Well, the ideal situation, uh, you know, as the athletic director is for both of these teams to split during the regular season, then play each other in the district finals, and then uh, let them settle things there. Is the school year is winding down? Uh, how things been going? Uh, everything's been going wonderful. Uh, I'm real excited about a lot of the things we have in place and the direction that we're headed, and uh, I'm excited about the future. Pitch is high, two and one. Running on to play, we're going to... Going to be caught stealing for out number three is Corey Martinez. So Martinez is caught stealing 2-4, and that will do it for the top of the second for Southview. But they get two runs. They did it on three base hits. Joe Box says there was one error and nobody left. After an inning and a half of play, we're tied at two. Southview and Admiral King on WLCS-TV 20.
Since 1921, your hometown financial professionals at First Federal Savings of Lorraine have dedicated themselves to meeting the financial needs of their customers and surrounding communities. They offer a wide variety of financial investments as well as home mortgages to meet your every need. Loans on boats, cars, mobile homes, and other worthwhile purchases are also available. Whatever your financial need, First Federal Savings of Lorraine is ready to help. With eight convenient locations to serve you in Lorraine, Avon, Huron, Sandusky, Port Clinton, and now its newest location at Park Avenue and Levitt Road in Amherst. First Federal Savings of Lorraine is an equal housing lender and FDIC insured. At DOD, every job is important, and every job contributes to our nation's defense. The Department of Defense offers job opportunities from A to Z. They are your chance to help our nation's defense, work with a great team, and build a career that you can be proud of. So whether you're seeking an entry level, a mid-career opportunity, or a chance to move into a senior position, start your search today at GoDefense.com. Bottom of the sixth, second inning, we are tied at two. Cameron Zatala, Matt Comer, Matt Toth, the eight, nine, and one hitters for the Admirals. And the first pitch is a called strike from Cameron Castro. Rob Polinski coming over from WEOL Radio. Joined by Brian Corey, Lorraine City Schools Athletic Director. Joe Bach on the cameras tonight. Behind home plate, the 01 pitch. And that one's just outside 1-1. One one. Our other two camera operators tonight, again, thanks to John Jacobin, who is over there at third base. And at first base, Bob Schlembaker. We'll hear from Teresa Newhoff with the Morning Journal a little bit later on. She'll give us her thoughts on the uh, field here, Pipe Yard Park. My second opportunity to be here, and uh, it really is something. Uh, a beautiful ballpark. Had my first chance to go out onto the field itself, Brian. And, uh, you know, it's one of those days where you're out there walking around. You're envious of the kids being able to play. Well, one thing, you know, I, I've told a lot of people, you don't realize how nice this facility is and what this is all about until you come out here. I know people say, I, you know, I'm not easily impressed. And, and that first game when I came out here, I was in awe. Uh, you know, this is just an unbelievable facility and uh, the people in Lorraine should be really proud of what we have here. Two balls, two strikes, here's the pitch. That one's gonna be chopped to first. Coming up with it is Martinez. He'll flip to the pitcher covering Cameron Castro for the first out of the second inning and that one will go 3-1. One thing I will say, too, you know, you were talking earlier about uh, Joe Bach and his crew. Yeah. I don't know that there's uh, too many people in uh, Lorraine City Schools that work as hard as these guys do, covering everything that they cover and doing everything that they do, uh, you know, the genuine effort in, in trying to really help the kids in, in the city of Lorraine. I, those guys need to be commended. No, I agree. They do a tremendous job and do all kinds of events. I always, I laugh. I think that... Uh, you know, between Tim and myself and, and the other people at the radio station that we do a lot. But when I hear what Joe and his guys have to do, I just laugh because I think we work hard, but we don't put in near the time that Joe and his staff at uh, Channel 20. Oh, it is days you drive by that place, man. It's 11 o'clock at night and he's over there working. Here's the pitch to Matt Comer. Well, thanks, Brian. Checks in the mail. <laughs> that one's <laughs> off the corner, 2-0. Oh. Matt Comer, a junior shortstop, adds 227, seven RBIs for the 11th grader. Bottom of the second inning, nobody on one out. We're tied at two. Castro with the pitch. There's a called strike. You know, another thing that's impressive with both these teams, I mean, you know, you have some obviously very important seniors that are legitimate contributors, but I tell you what, the underclassmen and what they both these teams have coming back, uh, these teams are going to be uh, extremely competitive again next year. The pitch swung on and missed. Or I guess that evens the count at two and two. John Ekesy, the first year head coach, down in the third base box, giving the instructions to Matt Comer. It's Castro now with the two two. Swung out a miss for strike three. And for Cameron Castro, he gets his first strikeout of the evening. Two outs now, and back to the top of the order. And Matt Toth, Matt had a triple and scored the first run in the first inning. You know, one thing I'll say about Cameron Castro, I, I've watched him as, as a baseball player from his freshman year, and he's really developed uh, as a pitcher. I mean, 
from where he's he started as a freshman and to where he's at right now at only only being a junior with, with another year coming back again next year this kid uh, has done a tremendous job people just keep pouring in the crowd getting bigger and bigger here on this beautiful Friday evening here at Pipe Yard Park in Lorraine nobody on two out in the bottom of the second the pitch that one's low for ball one yeah Brian somebody mentioned to me we should we need to talk with uh, Cleveland State so they uh, encourage them to get a football team so they can revamp George Daniels and play their games there. <laughs> <laughs> the 1-0 pitch. That one's high outside, 2-0. Of course, football will be here before we know it, and it'll be the fall season. I know you want to enjoy the summer, Brian, but football right around the corner. Both these teams will be in action here in a few months. Oh, I know, and, and you know, I, I love it. And, you know, I have a, a son that's four years old, and... Uh, Every year that goes by, you know, he, he inches closer and closer to, to being able to run around while those guys are practicing and, you know, being the ball boy and, and, and doing a lot of things, interacting with the team. So, uh, you know, that's important. Obviously, that's important for me, and, and uh, I know he's going to really enjoy that growing up. Three balls, one strike. I know Admiral King uh, got football turned around quite a bit last year, and I'm sure you'd like to see a, a Southview show some improvement this uh, coming year and start to get their football program back in order. Well, I, I'm, I'm really excited. I, I know Todd Ovel's uh, uh, done a tremendous job in the short period of time that he's been there. Uh, you know, the kids seem really fired up. Uh, I was just over at weightlifting at Admiral King last week, and he had over 40 kids in there, and obviously right. that excludes the baseball and, and track athletes. So uh, they're fired up for this year. I, I'm, I'm really excited for them. The 3-2 pitch is inside to Matt Toth. He is on base for the second time. He draws the walk. And the two-out walk will now bring up Cody Buckholtz. Cody, Cody scored in the first inning, the second run. He was safe on an air on the third baseman, Eric Feliciano, and would later come around to score on a single by Chad Hall. Speaking of football, uh, I don't know if you know, but we're having a uh elementary fifth and sixth grade football starting this year full contact pads no kid uh yeah we have sign up start that just started last week and uh the uh <laughs> the number of kids signing up is pretty overwhelming so uh that's looks great like we're going to be buying a little bit more equipment than what we initially thought but that's i guess that's a good thing so if do you need coaches officials for that are you guys pretty well set how do you uh, we get that organized need, has to we be definitely a lot. we definitely need coaches i mean we have a number of individuals that are uh interested in volunteering and helping out but uh we definitely are going to need coaches and the more the merrier the more people the better there's a shot to deep left center field racing over edwin ortiz he'll come under it and make the put out for out number three so cody buck Holtz is out on the fly out to left field and that will do it for the admirals in the bottom of the second no runs no hits no errors one left after two we are tied at two southview and admiral king you're watching high school baseball on wlcs tv 20. Kids, here's my favorite animal. Strong, intelligent, ethical, dependable, compassionate, and patriotic. By the way, where's, where's John? Intelligent, strong, ethical, dependable, compassionate, and patriotic. When you help your neighbors, you help your nation. Everyone can do something. Visit us at usafreedomcorps.gov. When I was senator, I did a lot After of that, things. I was able to orbit the Earth in a great big rocket ship. America is on the move. America on the move is for real people of all ages and sizes. Even you can do it. Even I can do it. My pedometer keeps track of my steps. I have one, too. All you have to do is go online. It's fun. It's easy. And it's all free. I've lost five inches off my waist, two inches off my hips, and lowered my cholesterol by 22 points. We walked every street in our town. Every morning before work, off we, we go. go. Register online at americaonthemove.org. America on the move. Top of the third inning, we're tied at two. Michael Rosario stands in and hits the first pitch into the infield. Going under it is Matt Comer, the shortstop, and he makes the put out for out number one. Rosario was up in the second inning, but he didn't get to complete his at-bat because Corey Martinez was caught stealing. So one out quickly here in the third inning, and Teresa Newhoff joins us from the Lorraine Morning Journal. I'm sure a lot of the viewers of WLCS TV 20 Read the journal, see a lot of Teresa's uh, work, and uh, Teresa, your thoughts on coming here to Pipe Yard Park tonight and seeing this ball game? 
Well, honestly, I was assigned to this game about a week ago, and I didn't know what to expect. And I kept hearing, oh, it's great out there, it's great out there. And then my coworker, Dan Gillis, covered the opener for CSU. And he kept telling me, you are not gonna believe it out there. And honestly, ooh, it nice hit. Hit to left center field, racing over the center fielder, Matt Toth makes the out for out number two. But what a great place. This is so good for the city of Lorraine. I, can't, I really can't even believe it. To have something like this, I don't even feel like I'm in Lorraine, to be honest. I yeah. feel like I'm in another city. It's so positive. Absolutely. And, and I'm sure, you know, for, for the Morning Journal, you'll be covering a lot of the events that are out here, whether it be CSU or these high school teams or anything that goes on over here. I'm sure the, the readers of the journal can follow it to, through the newspaper. Oh, definitely. And it's funny because I came over here, usually I keep a uh, lawn chair in my car because I'm used to sitting behind, yep. you know, home plate. You get dust in your face. You have to wear two pairs of wool socks, whole full length. That's spring sports you for know, you. And, oh, yeah. And we're here up here in a warm, nice press box. You can see everything perfectly, and it's awesome. Pitch to Edwin Ortiz. That's inside. One ball, one strike. Yeah, it's not right to have, uh, you know, your long thermals on <laughs> exactly. in, in May. But that's kind of covering spring sports what happens. Exactly. The pitch. That one's going to be lifted to second base. Getting underneath it is Cody Buckholz, and he makes the put out for out number three. So quickly, the Saints go one, two, three in the top of the third. We've played two and a half innings of baseball. We are tied at two. Southview and Admiral King on WLCS TV 20, Lorraine City Schools Television. While progress should never come to a halt, there are many places it should never come to at all. So we work locally with communities, businesses, and people like you to save precious places around the world forever. I'm Paul Newman. Help the Nature Conservancy save the last great places. Looking for the right color, the right style, the right price for your floor coverings? Well, you can find them all at Ted's Floor Coverings, the only place you need to shop for affordable custom flooring. Whether you're looking for area rugs, carpeting, laminates, ceramic, or marble, you'll enjoy browsing through one of the largest showrooms in Northeast Ohio. Their talented staff will even help with your design questions. Ted's is proud to showcase the Kathy Ireland Shades of America collection. Shop at Ted's Floor Covering, 668 Broadway, downtown Lorraine, a local company committed to our community. Ted Kalo, president. Welcome back to Pipe Yard Park in Lorraine. Rob Polinski, Teresa Duhoff, Joe Bach. Bottom of the third inning, we're tied at two. And that first pitch is lifted foul down the left field line to Sean Buckholtz. It'll be Sean Buckholtz, J.T. Feldkamp, Colin Wright, the three, four, and five hitters for the Admirals. Teresa, I'm sure the, the viewers, again, readers of the journal, uh, have been familiar with your work. You've done sports for a long time at the uh, Morning Journal. Uh, tell our, uh, our viewers a little bit about what you do over there, some of your responsibilities. Well, uh, let's see. When I graduated from college, I started at the Journal, and I just have been there ever since. So that's 13 years. I put out the paper. I, you know, edit. You ever edit everything. You cover game stories. You kind of keep track of what's going on. And it's helpful when there's people who email you or call you or sure. who, who grab you at a game and say, hey, check out this person or here's a good story for you. It's just fun because... You get to know so many people, and right. I don't know. It's 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 it becomes a lifestyle. It's when you when you love what you do, it doesn't even feel like a job. Well, it, obviously, it makes you an active part of your community That's as well. That's true. Two balls, one strike. The count, the pitch from Cameron Castro, and there's a called strike. It'll be about two balls and two strikes. I saw Admiral King play earlier this season. They played Sandusky, and they blew Sandusky out. It was only a five-inning game. They were really good then, and I, I I think it's awesome that they're still on a roll like this. I didn't have any doubt that they'd be on a roll, but, you know, you never know. Right. 2-2 two, two pitches outside. 3-2 and two to Sean Buckholtz. Hey, guys, I delivered the journal for three years. There you go. <laughs> I've read it. He popped out to Corey Martinez in the first inning. 
That one's going to be chopped to short. Coming up with it is Valentin. The long throw to first. Pulls the first baseman off the bag. Did he make? No, did not make the tag. So safe at first is Sean Buckholtz on the throwing ear. Nice hustle. Yeah, Corey Martinez came off the bag and then tried to do that sweep tag, Joe, but to evidently was not able to get Sean Buckholtz, and now they'll get him his jacket out there. Just missed him. As, uh, that was a good effort by Corey Martinez, but he wasn't able to come up with it. And that'll bring JT Feldkamp up. JT was safe on an air in the first inning. But again, his numbers are something, Joe. The senior catcher, and I know you've seen him play, 563 average and 25 RBIs. Just a great year. Great year in football as well. He was a member of the basketball team too, was yep. he not? That's oh, what yeah. I thought. That one's fouled straight back going one. He had a shoulder injury for, uh, he was out for, uh, uh, missed a few games, mm -hmm. but uh, real, real impact player. Teresa, do you have a favorite sport to, to cover? I mean, as a writer, is there a sport you like to do or do you just kind of like them all? I love football because when I started out, I didn't know a thing about football. I couldn't tell a first down from a rushing yard to a passing yard. And I went to my first game and I was told to keep a box score and I didn't know what the heck to do. Right. So I became an OHSA official. So I would know exactly no what I was talking about. So football by far, because I worked the hardest to learn that sport. The pitch, that one's going to be lifted in the air. The shortstop, Valentin, he'll make the put out for out number one. That that's the sport I love the most. And you know, sometimes I, I, I wish I could just hold a class for women. And they, I mean, girls of every age, if they would just learn a little bit about sports they would be able to relate to their dads and their husbands and their boyfriends so much better because sports is fun. And some women are intimidated by it, but they should just get out there and, and enjoy it and see what it's all about. Well, that's interesting. I never really, never really thought about that. Colin Wright stands in. Colin 0 for 1 today. One on and one out in the bottom of the third. We're tied at 2. Pitches a called strike. Well, maybe the Morning Journal could sponsor that. And Teresa, you could, <laughs> you could put that on. Yeah, that would be great. Then, yeah, women women should know about sports. My, my oh, I'll tell you after this pitch okay. and see what happens here. Castro looks to the plate to Perkins, gets the sign, the pitch. That one's low, one and one. One of my friends, one time we were watching a football game and she wanted to, you know, she wanted me to teach her some things. And I don't remember who was playing, but I said, now this team doesn't show up sometimes to play. And she goes, you mean they just don't show up? <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, oh no, we gotta really start from scratch here. Throw over to first, gets away, and getting around second all the way to third will be Buckholtz on the throwing air. Boy, the air is continuing for the uh, Southview Saints. Unofficially, I have that for five airs now for them through uh, here in the third inning, and that has really led to all the Admiral's damage. Nothing that uh, Corey Martinez could do. He dove for the ball, but it was thrown wildly to first by Castro. And so with one out, Colin Wright up. That puts Buckholz to third base, and Colin Wright, third baseman junior, with 20 RBIs. And I don't know how many stolen bases the pitcher Sean Buckholz has, but I doubt it would be many. I'm surprised Castro even threw over. Here's the pitch. That one's going to be chopped to short. Valentin runs over to get it. Long throw to first. That's not going to be in time. An infield hit and an RBI. So. Regaining the lead are the Admirals at 3-2. Valentin did a good job ranging far to his right to get that in the hole, but he could not throw out Colin Wright. And the Admirals lead 3-2 with Chad Hall coming up. So any, uh, I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot here, Teresa, but you know, in your career at the Journal, any you know particular games or, or maybe an event that, that stands out, something you really enjoyed covering and, and, and was fun for you to do? You know what, the one thing, I, I'm a Lorraine Catholic graduate. Sure, that's gonna be popped up into foul territory. Robert Perkins hustling and cannot get back in time. It's a foul ball strike one. Probably the most most emotional game for me to cover was when Lorraine Catholic had their ba their last basketball game at the school. I remember that. I mean, just so many different, I mean, I've been all over the place covering stuff, just like you, Rob, everywhere we go, we see each other. We covered that game on TV 20. Oh, did you really? <laughs> did Joe? you really? Yep. Yes, uh, and actually, uh, you know, we didn't mean it to be, we didn't do it for this, but it was the best-selling uh, tape or DVD we ever had. Oh, wow. Sure. 
No balls, one strike. Is, is yeah. it? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Is that tape still available, Joe Bach? Oh, uh, yeah. It's, yeah <laughs> we have it in the archives. <laughs> All right. You think for Teresa's hard work that she's doing here, Joe, with this expert commentary, she's entitled to a DVD for her we'll fix alma her up. mater, Lorraine Catholic? <laughs> we'll fix her up. See, so, yeah, it took care of you. <laughs> That's cute. One and one, one out the pitch. Slow two and one. I know Tim Alcorn covered that game for us at the radio station that night, and I know that was an emotional night for everybody involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, too bad it wasn't a better game. Uh, Lorraine Catholic blew him out. <laughs> Honestly, I can't even remember. I was just so fixated on the fact that that was the last game. I don't even remember what happened, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. it was a it was a blowout. It was. Uh, I just know they played open door, and Alan Genuzzi mm -hmm. again, the coach, was a Lorraine Catholic grad, brought his team back. That one's foul, two and two. You know, Rob, don't you and Joe, don't you think that this new stadium is really just? I, I really cannot believe as I look around. Just imagine the little kids here this summer that are going to see this stadium. Yeah, this is in Lorraine. This is awesome. And right. they, I mean, it's it's just so awesome that it kids are it it, is, it helps kids aspire to reach higher and to, to make their goals. I think this is going to be the tip of the iceberg. I think in years to come, you're going to see growth around this area now. Uh, just driving up on on 58 from from Elyria, driving over, uh, seeing some of the things that are happening. Uh, in the area and the surrounding areas. I, I think I think this part of town is going to take off. I really think it's going to help out in so many ways. Yeah, I hope people take ownership and and because just a few short years ago you had people vandalizing mm -hmm. and, and, and cutting up the bleachers for yep. scrap and and I hope they take pride in this and and, and people can appreciate uh, you know something like this is in Lorraine and you know keep it nice. I'm sure they will. Two balls, two strikes to pitch to Hall. That's going to be ripped foul. The count will remain two and two. And having to get back to first base is Colin Wright. One run is in here in the bottom of the third inning. Admiral's on top three to two. Colin Wright at first base, one out with Chad Hall at the plate. Let's reset the Southview defense if you're just joining us. It's Corey Martinez at first. Michael Rosario's at second. Ryan Valentin is at shortstop. Eric Feliciano plays third. Behind the plate is Robert Perkins. On the mound is Cameron Castro. Left to right field, Edwin Ortiz, Justin Miller, and Chris Garcia for the Saints and coach Brad Turnus. Pitch, and that one's inside, and that is going to hit Chad Hall, and he'll get down to second base. Or to first base, I should say. Going to second is Colin Wright. Tom Sigmund now will come up. Tom, right fielder, a junior, grounded out to shortstop at his first at bat. They even have music when each batter comes up to play. Isn't that cool? It's like the Indians game or something. Tell us a little bit about things uh, at the Journal. Obviously, you know, you guys focus on, on, you know, the high school sports, prep sports are a big important part of it. I know uh, you cover college as well. The Indians with their great start and the Cavs. A lot of things going on. It's got to be a fun time for readers of the paper. Oh, it's awesome. There's just so much going on. And for me, I don't cover pro sports or college. It's high school. Mm -hmm. So just, just to watch the, these kids, like when they start as freshmen and develop over the years, it's unbelievable. I mean, some of these kids, I remember, you know, just younger, even in LYB, and now they're here, you know, on the high school level, and they'll hopefully go on to college. It's just, it's awesome. The pitch, there's a called strike evens to count at one and one. Michael Rosario, the second baseman there for Southview, trying to keep Colin Wright close. You can see him there at second. Cameron Castro looks back. He'll come plateward. That one's going to be ripped into the hole. And not being able to get over there in time uh, is Michael Rosario. And a run will score. And that was just because Rosario was over at second base covering. And the ball was ripped by Sigmund right where Rosario was. I, I, Joe, I think that's an infield hit just because he couldn't get, really get over there in time. Yeah, we'll give him a hit on that. It's a hit and an RBI. That's one of those where the Saints were trying to keep Buckholtz close and maybe it cost him because Rosario probably would have gotten to that ball had he been shaded on that side. Now the Admirals with two in in the inning lead four to two and Cameron Zatala, first baseman, junior. You know, last inning, uh, athletic director uh, Brian Corey was talking about the uh, the uh, youth football program that we're going to be doing. Right. Back in the winter, we had fifth and sixth grade basketball 
program, we had over 500 kids complete the program. Wow. And uh, it was kind of cool. We decided, TV20 uh, did the championships for the girls and the boys, so that uh, it was funny coming into the gym and, and, and when I'm putting up the banner, everybody's like pointing and we're gonna be on TV. And it was kind of, it was very exciting, uh, you know, for the kids. Jim Allen letting us know that Sigmund is hit in 17 straight games, and that is an Admiral King record. And if somebody would know that, it would be Jim Allen. So congratulations to Tom for that, for that record. And now Cameron Zatala comes up with one out and two on here in the bottom of the third. Runners on the corners. Okay. Saints really need a double play here. Zatala grounded out to the first baseman in his first at bat. Fouls that one off, it's 0-1. Well, what we do without Jim Allen, you know how many times I've emailed him <laughs> with questions and he can clear them up for me immediately. You know, and I'm not from here, so when I came 10 years ago, uh, was an invaluable resource for me at the radio station and I, you know, because there's just so many things I did not know. And uh, just able to pick his brain has been, uh, been very, very helpful the last 10 years oh, for yeah. me personally. That one's hit foul and out of play, 0-2. So quickly out in front is Cameron Castro. The Admirals with two in the third so far lead it four to two here in the bottom of the third inning. Waiting on deck is Matt Comer who struck out in the second inning. Zatala asked for and is granted time. Joe, do you know if they're gonna play again here um, this year, this season or? Is this the only time? I believe this is the only, because uh, this is the second time uh, Southview and King. Uh, right. Oh, okay. Play. The pitch, that one's going to be chopped foul. It's 0-2. Now, in the future, they they are talking about playing more of their, uh, uh, a few more of their home games here. So pitcher warming up for Southview in the bullpen down that way. And uh, you know, left-handed uh, pitcher for the Saints. Yeah, of course, that's, that's dependent upon CSU being out of town that uh, particular time. So things kind of worked out uh, so King and South, you could play this game. I believe it's Evan Nieto warming up. Pitch is high, Perkins throws uh, back to the pitcher, Castro. So getting down to second base on the stolen base is Tom Sigmund. I think just in the time that you've been at the Journal, you were talking about women in sports, and think of think of how the girls have improved uh, in the in the games that you cover and the different uh, the different sporting events. Uh, just since I've been in, in high school, uh, it's so much different now, Teresa. It's night and day because, I mean, when I was in high school, I, I didn't even I didn't play sports in high school, and my younger sisters started playing sports, and then girls started lifting weights. Right. And, and really, you're right, it, it's night and day. It's Pitch swung on a miss for strike three, and that's the second out of the inning. A big strikeout there for Cameron Castro. So two outs here in the bottom of the third, and now Matt Comer will come up. Teresa, what, what made you want to become a sports writer? You said you didn't play sports uh, as a youngster. What, what, what was the, the decision, and what did you want to originally be, and then decided you flunked out of that and said, okay, I'll be a sports writer? I wanted to be on TV. I always thought I could be a broadcaster. I thought that'd be so cool. But I just kind of fell into it, and I started uh, just doing games one at a time, and then I just, I loved it, so I, I kept with it. And mm. I really didn't expect to be with it this long, to be honest. Matt Comer swings and misses for strike one. We'll but see where I would have the radio face. You definitely have the TV face, so that <laughs> you could have done that. Pitch is high and outside, one and one. Runners at second and third, two out for Admiral King in the bottom of the third. They lead four to two. I mean, what else is there when I tell the people at the newspaper, I say, hey, news, sports sells the newspaper. Everybody <laughs> just takes the paper and takes the sports out and throws the news on the ground. Oh, that thrills them. <laughs> Here's the pitch. That one's going to be lifted into right field. It'll go into foul territory and indeed out of play for one ball, two strikes. Boy, the... The stands here are pretty much almost packed all the way. I mean, there's, there's. It really is something. There are yeah. more people here 
than, than I would have thought. A real good crowd as Joe Bach uh, shoots over the crowd here at Pipe Yard Park. There's a lot of students, there's a lot of parents. I see there's a bunch of coaches from the school and teachers from both schools. Yep, and just people in the rain that want to come out and watch the ball game. Called strike three, and uh, Comer strikes out for the second time. So the third inning comes to an end, but not before the Admirals get two more runs. They did it on two base hits. There were two errors and two left after three innings of play. It's Admiral King 4, Southview 2. You're watching High School Baseball on WLCS TV 20, Lorraine City Schools TV. Gold medal swimmer Amanda Beard. When America's national symbol, the bald eagle, was threatened with extinction, we responded with the Endangered Species Act, a law which now protects more than a thousand different species. But as some species recover, others become imperiled. Let us pledge to the next generation that we will help protect America's wildlife heritage for them. Thanks, Thank Amanda. Amanda. Join me and Defenders of Wildlife to help save something wild. Visit defenders.org. This may not look like paradise to you, but for a polar bear mother, it's just what nature ordered. Scientists tell us the intrusion of people into wildlife sanctuaries with our noise and commotion may severely disrupt the lives of polar bears, forcing the mothers to abandon their dens and their cubs to die. Learn more about polar bears and what you can do to help. Visit our website, savepolarbears.org, today. Top of the fourth inning for Southview, they trail four to two. Ryan Valentine, Robert Perkins, Eric Feliciano, the three, four, and five hitters are up. Rob Polinski along with Joe Bach. Thanks to Teresa Newhoff for joining us from the Lorraine Morning Journal. I'll tell you, it's been a few innings, Joe, since we've set them, so why don't we set the Admiral King defense for the viewers who maybe are just coming on. Again, for Admiral King, it's Cameron Zatala at first base, Cody Buckholtz at second, junior shortstop is Matt Comer, Colin Wright is at third base. So those gentlemen are all juniors. Here's the pitch. That one's low, one and one. Behind the plate is senior J.T. Feldkamp. On the mound is senior Sean Buckholtz. And left to right field, we have Chad Hall, a sophomore, Matt Toth, a junior, and Tom Sigmund is out in right field as it gets darker and darker here at Pipe Yard Park. And the pitch, that one is low. It's two and one. And the lights have been on since the beginning of the ball game. And the pitch. And that one's going to be chopped to short. Coming up with it is Comer, the long throw to first in time for the out. Matt Comer with good range there, getting the out for the first out. And, you know, guys, I, I'm sure these the, the high school players, they're not used to playing under the lights. I think it could get interesting uh, the darker it gets in, in seeing how the kids do under the lights because this has to be a new experience for them as well. That's a good point. And just, I mean, the, the field itself, it, I would think that you would feel maybe even more professional on a field like this with the crowd and right. everything that's going on. Maybe not that they don't take the other games more seriously, but especially since they're rivals. Sure. They're probably really focused, both teams, I would think. I kind of noticed in the pregame warm-up, they both were definitely very intense. Robert Perkins, the catcher, singled and scored. He's one for one. Takes a look at that one high and outside. It evens the count at 1-1. One one. One out, nobody on in the top of the fourth. Admiral King leading four to two. The Admirals with two in the first and two in the third. Southview scored two in the second. That one's going to be hit in the left center field. That'll be a base hit. Coming up with it is Chad Hall, and he'll throw it in, and he'll keep Perkins at first. But Robert now two for two on the evening. Eric Feliciano, third baseman senior, eight RBIs, 404 average, had a sacrifice bunt back in the first inning. So the Admirals, again, scoring in the odd innings in the first and third. Southview scoring in the even inning in the second. So if the pattern stays the same, I guess Southview's due for a couple runs here in the fourth. We'll have to see. The pitch by Buck Holtz is high and outside, 1-0. Well, Go ahead. Go we're ahead. watching history, then, if this is the first game under the lights in Lorraine County. Right. Maybe this will be your next, next best-selling tape, Joe. <laughs> Well, you're on it. That's probably going to go past <laughs> that Lorraine Catholic team. That one's a called strike. J.T. Feldkamp, I was reading in another newspaper, 
that's not yours, but you know, a little bit bigger, uh, about 30 miles east <laughs> of here. They were saying that uh, JT has thrown out 11 out of 12 base dealers. I couldn't believe that. Wow. It was in their, their report. That one's filed to the screen. So 12 base runners have attempted to steal on JT. And at the time of this uh, article, uh, he had thrown out 11. Uh, I don't know if I've ever heard of that at any level. Feliciano awaits the one two from Sean Buckholtz. That one's fouled into the screen. Awaiting on deck is Justin Miller. Justin had an RBI single back in the second inning. Robert Perkins on first base gets a decent lead. And we're going to have time called for by Eric Feliciano. Buckholtz comes set, the pitch. Swung on a miss for strike three. The throw down the first and getting back in time is Perkins. So Feliciano was a strikeout victim. That's the second out of the fourth inning. And that's the fourth strikeout for Buckholtz, his first since he struck out the side in the first inning. And now Justin Miller comes up, 14 RBIs for the center fielder. He's a senior. Again, he had an RBI single and later would score in the second inning. That one bounces in, 1 0. Can Rob Polinski, Teresa Newhoff, Joe Bach from Pipe Yard Park in Lorraine. Teresa, just feel free to chime in here whenever Great. you want. Radio's fun. The pitch. That one's going to be ripped and nice job by the second baseman coming over. Cody Buckholtz dove, got the stop and threw to Matt Comer covering for the put out. There's the defensive play of the game so far. So the put out goes 4-6 for the third out of the inning, and there were no runs, one hit, no errors, nobody left. And after three and a half innings, we're halfway through. It's Admiral King 4, Southview 2 on WLCS TV 20. Your one-stop place for something really special is Impressions, corner of Oberlin Avenue and Tower Boulevard. T-shirts and sweatshirts personally designed to your specific needs. Anything from bears, trains to zebras, and specially designed hats as well. And don't forget Impressions, your one-stop spot for school jackets. See Dave, the designer expert at Impressions, Oberlin Avenue at Tower Boulevard, right here in Lorraine. Uh, Mrs. DeBruzzo, I'm I'm here, here with the me. neighborhood watch. Wait, we're for, yeah, yes. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. We won! I, I'm signing up people for the neighborhood watch. You made I, our dreams come true. Do you have your cameras here? Yeah. Where are you yes. going, Mr. McMahon? I'm going to check with the lady next door. Yeah, are you going to get the check? The check is Start a neighborhood watch. It's just one of the many ways you can help make America stronger. To find out how, call or log on for this free guide. Or twice. He'll left that to lift that the left field. Edwin Ortiz over by the line in foul territory makes the put out for out number one. Teresa, you're telling us a little bit about uh, what you did uh, this spring as well. Obviously, not just covering baseball. Uh, understand you also like uh, doing softball and track. Softball and track. You know, Admiral King boys are really good this year. I, Pat McGill has done such a great job with that bro boys program, and they have so many great athletes, so many good sprinters. And they're all nice guys, and their goal is to make it to state this year, and I really think they can do it. Last year, Demetrius Ivey had a good shot at making it by himself, but he got injured in districts. And this year he's healthy, and if him and Japan Odins and Mark Jones and the rest of them, if they can get it together, they can go to state. Ball's going to be hit, gets past Valentine. And Cody Buck holds the save. Joe, we're going to give an air to Valentine there, or yeah. Okay, so E6. Valentine's had a tough day defensively today. Now Sean Buck Holtz will come up, and you know tracks one of those interesting sports guys in the fact that you just mentioned it, Teresa. You, it's individual. It's also team. You know, it's kind of like wrestling in that standpoint. That you know, you've got your individual. You can you know qualify that way, and then also the team can qualify as well. Southview has a good girl, uh, Alexis Washington. She's a sophomore, and last year she was okay, but this year she has really blossomed. 
and she has really helped the sprint, the relays. And I mean, she could go maybe as an individual, but she might be able to bring a couple girls with her too to state. Sean Buckholtz is up, looks to bunt, and he takes a strike, one and one. So both both programs, and the Admiral King girls are good. The Southview boys have a new coach, um, Sue Patterson. She's very experienced. She used to be at Firelands, a cross-country coach, and mm. she's really helped those kids. So both track programs are really doing well. Buckholtz 0 for 2. Popped out to the first baseman, Cameron Zatala, in the first. And he was safe on an error in the third and later would score. Pitch, that one's going to be ripped into left field for a solid base hit. Stopping at second will be Cody Buckholtz. Sean Buckholtz with his first hit of the evening. And the Admirals have two on. Again, if you're just joining us, Admiral King 7-0 in the Lake Erie League atop the Erie Division. Southview a game and a half behind at five and one. Now you can tell how important this ball game is. If Southview were to win, they would draw to within a half game of Admiral King. And if the Admirals win, they will all but lock up the Lake Erie League. And uh, that one was a hard shot off Eric Feliciano, the uh, third baseman. Brad Turnus is gonna come out and take a look at Eric as, Joe, I don't know if you had an opportunity to see that. The pole is kind of right in front of me, but it looks like maybe it caught him on the wrist. Um, yeah, I did, I did not catch that, no. Okay, no problem. Trainer comes over quickly to look at Eric. He shakes him off and just about set to get back underway. JT Feldkamp will be up, boy. JT comes up with runners at first and second. And you hear the heat is on up behind us, and it definitely is. JT with 25 RBIs on the season, that 563 average for the senior catcher. So Cameron Castro will try to work out of this jam. Buck Holtz is at first and second, the pitch. That one's off the or off of Health Camp. It hit him, and the bases are now loaded. Okay. All right, all right. So the bases are now loaded, and Colin Wright will come up. He's one for two, had an RBI single, and scored in the third inning. So bases loaded, one out for Admiral King. They're already up four to two. Well, it's imperative here, guys, for the Saints, I think, to hold the Admirals. That one's going to be hit down to in the hole between short and third. One run will score. Sean Buckholtz around third. He's going to try to score. The lob throw away over the head of the catcher. Two runs are in, and the runners move up to second and third. So an RBI single by Colin Wright. Two RBIs, and it's 6-2 Admiral King. Were you a Devo fan, Teresa? Back Not at in the all. Day? No. Not at all. Six hundred and fifty-five people. Wow. Ryan Corey letting us know 655 people here at Pipe Yard Park to watch this one. And Brad Turnus comes out. I think he's going to make a pitching change. So, Joe, as we make the pitching change, does that sound like a good time for a break to you? Sounds good to me. All right, we'll take a break in the fourth inning with uh, Admiral King out in front, 6-2. to two. We'll get you the name of the pitcher, and we'll be back after these messages. There's a place where a total stranger will give their blood to save your life. A place where someone you never knew will save your child from drowning. Where someone will give you food and shelter after a flood. That place is called America. Where we look out for each other. When you help the American Red Cross, you help America. Welcome back in the bottom of the fourth inning. Evan Nieto comes on the pitch for the Admirals, left-hand pitcher. So the day is done for Cameron Castro. Cameron went three and a third inning, and we'll have to wait to give you his line because he is responsible for the runners in second and third. To this point, he's given up six runs, but uh, the Saints defense was not there today. So, you know, you can only blame Castro for so much as defense really failed him here tonight so far. Chad Hall steps in, he's singled and he was hit by a pitch, he's one for one. Infield in for the Saints, here's the pitch. 
That one's off the plate, 1-0. So two runs are in for the Admirals. They lead it 6-2. to two. They're trying to add to that. They have Chad Hall at second, J.T. Feldkamp at third, and one out. Here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Again, the Saints infield is in at the cut of the grass. Nieto's pitch. That one's off the plate. And it's two balls, no strikes. Again, we want to thank Joe Bach, home plate camera operator and color commentator here, along with uh, Don Jacobin over there at third base, and the one and only Bob Schlembaker over at first base doing a good job bringing you the pitchers into your homes so you can see this ball game between Southview and Admiral King. Appreciate everybody's work tonight. Nieto's pitch, that one's off the plate for ball two. Let's see if we can get you his numbers here pitching-wise. So far, Evan is 1-0. and Get you some more of his numbers here in a minute. He's given up one earned run, struck out seven and walked four, allowed three hits. The lefty comes set. Pitch, and that one's ball four. Chad Hall will walk. So the bases are reloaded here in the bottom of the fourth. And with one out, Tom Sigmund will come up. Tom one for two with an RBI single in his last at bat. And Jim Allen telling us that Tom has uh, hit a school record for Admiral King with hitting in 17 consecutive ball games. Nieto has pitched in nine innings so far this year for Southview. Bases loaded, one out, the middle infielders go back for to double play depth. The pitch, there's a bunt, a suicide squeeze, bunted foul. So the Admirals trying to pull off the suicide squeeze with Feldkamp coming down from third. Sigmund can't get the bunt down. He bunts it foul, and it's 0-1. Normally, Joe, you don't do that in back-to-back -back pitches, so I wouldn't think Sigmund would. If Southview thinks he might, you, you could see a pitch out here. Pitch, that one's low. It is, I believe, one ball, one strike. Nieto in relief with the pitch. That one's going to be hit down to first base. The throw home is going to be in time for the force out. Nice play. Boy, very nice play. Uh I didn't, I didn't think he was going to get him. Corey Martinez with the put out at first. And that will be 3-4 for the put out on a fielder's choice. It's real important to keep this at the, at, at the four runs right now. Right. Really don't want to give up any more. So the bases remain loaded, and Cameron Zatala comes up. Cameron 0 for 2 today. So Zatala is up, junior first baseman, batting 103, 0 for 2. The pitch, that one's going to be lifted foul and out of play. It's 0-1-1. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. Admiral King out in front, 6-2. to two. But the base is loaded. A hit here by Zatala. Really break this one open. And as Joe Bach just mentioned, Southview really needs to hold him right here. And then they'll have an opportunity down four with three more at bats. The pitch from Nieto. That one's going to be lifted foul and out of play. It's 0 2. Monday night, Admiral King defeated Southview over at Southview in round one of this rivalry. And just four days later, they come here to Pipe Yard Park for game number two. Zatala calls for time and gets it. King won that game in extra innings, eight to six. Southview had an early lead. King was able to rally and come back. The two teams could meet again, but it would be in the district championship 
as they are in opposite sides of the upcoming sectional district bracket. The pitch is a call strike. Nice curveball by Nieto. He comes in and does the job. So for the Admirals, they get two runs. They did it on uh, two base hits. There was an error, a walk, and three were left. After four innings of play, Admiral King 6, Southview 2 on WLCS TV 20. My family thought maybe I was depressed. I had trouble getting out of bed. I felt drowsy and forgetful. I even started to gain weight, and my skin felt dry. But then I got help. My doctor discovered an imbalance with my thyroid, and because I got treatment today, I feel terrific. Now my daughter knows what symptoms to look for before they affect her life. If you think you have a thyroid problem or any related symptoms, call your doctor and visit thyroidawareness.com. There is a new bank in town, Mortgage Plus Bank. We offer conventional purchases and refinance loans, debt consolidation, home equity lines of credit, construction loans, commercial loans, and we even offer 100% to 125% loans. Hi, I'm Scotty Campana of Mortgage Plus Bank. If you have high credit card debt, if your monthly payment is just too high and you can't get ahead, please call us today, and we can save you $500 on your processing fee. I know we can help you. Top of the fifth inning, Cameron Bryant to lead off for Southview. They trail 6-2. to two. Bryant takes a look at ball one. Bryant had an RBI single bank in the second inning. He'll be followed by Corey Martinez and Michael Rosario. The 7, 8, and 9 hitters are scheduled here for Southview in the top of the fifth. On the mound, starting pitcher Sean Buckholtz now in his fifth inning of work. That one's a check swing, and it's a called strike. Well, that closes the book on uh, Cameron Castro. He went three and a third innings. Gave up the six runs. We'll have to get you hits and walks and strikeouts a little bit later when we get a chance to add them up. Ball two, evens the count at two and two. For King defensively, Cameron's the tallest at first, Cody Buckholtz at second, Matt Comer at short, Colin Wright at third base. They're all juniors. Pitches inside, the count runs full. JT Feltke up the seniors behind the plate. Sean Buckholtz on the mound and left to right field. Sophomore Chad Hall. Matt Toth in center. Tom Sigmund in right. Pitch is lifted long but foul way out of play. And the count will remain full at three and two. Southview with their work cut out for them here as they trail by four runs with three innings to play. Going up against Sean Buckholtz who is three and oh on the season. And he has a 2.48 ERA coming into this one. That one is a curveball that didn't, and it is going to hit the runner. He's going to be hit by the pitch, and that is Cameron Bryant running down to first base. Well, Cameron didn't exactly get out of the way of that one. He knows he needs, uh, they need base runners. And he was hit by that pitch, and now Corey Martinez will come up. So Martinez, he was safe uh, out of fielder's choice back in the second inning. So Corey comes up. God bless him. Randy Rennick is the man. Pitch is high and outside, ball one. Joe, you can eat hot dogs in between innings, and <laughs> the best part of today is, unlike last time we were here eating hot dogs in the CSU game, you know, Teresa's buddy, Dave Richard, sees me up here eating a hot dog, and he takes my pitcher and blows it up and gives all my buddies <laughs> copies of it, Joe. <laughs> now, how funny, you know, you heard about that, no. huh, Teresa? Yeah, I have what a guy, huh? No, I can't wait. Oh. Ballpark Stadium mustard, the heck with you. No, we're good, Randy. Thank you. Thank you. Corey Martinez comes up. I haven't seen Dave here tonight. I thought he'd be here working. Maybe somebody snuck in and out. Buckholtz with the pitch. That one's off the plate outside. So for Southview, there's one on and no out here in the top of the fifth. They trail 6-2. Needing base runners, Corey Martinez will be followed by Michael Rosario. The count is two balls and one strike. And that one's high and outside, three and one. So the Saints trying to mount a rally here down 6-2. 
655 people in the crowd here tonight. And that one's off the plate, ball four. So the Saints, first two are on board. They've got a rally here in the top of the fifth and Michael Rosario comes up. He's 0 for 1, popped out the shortstop and is only at bat. Rosario, 326 average coming in, a homer, 13 RBIs for the junior second baseman. Big part of the ball game here, Joe. Shows bunt, takes a ball, ball one. Two on, nobody out. Big opportunity here. I know Rosario's the ninth batter in the lineup and all, but would you be surprised if he bunts since the Saints are down four here to fifth inning? No. Give up an out? No. Get them both in uh, scoring position. A base hit brings them home. You're with, back within two. Gotcha. A little meeting at the mound is coming over as Colin Wright, the third baseman, and JT Feldkamp. They meet with Sean Buckholtz to talk over a little bit of strategy. Yeah, maybe uh, giving the bullpen some time. I see they're warming up there. In, in at first is Cameron Zatalo winning the bunt. And it takes a look at a, at a ball. It's 2-0. and oh. And again, Joe, you're right. There are admirals warming up in the bullpen. Can't see the numbers from here, but if there's a pitching change, obviously we'll get that for you. Pitch, that one is going to be bunted fair down the third base line. Wright comes up with it. The throw to first is going to be not in time. Everybody's safe. So the bunt on Rosario, that pitch was inside. He got it down. Wright wasn't coming down third base because he was covering. So by the time he got there, didn't have time. It's an infield hit. And the bases are loaded, Joe, with nobody out. Yeah, I and mean, here comes the uh, pitching coach. I think we're going to get a change here. Is it John Acasey, I believe, that's coming out onto the mound to gather all the admirals around? So the entire infield meeting there on the mound, Joe, as John Acasey brings them there. And the bases are going to be loaded and back to the top of the order for Chris Garcia. Junior right fielder who was 0 for 2 today, but came in with a 400 average and a homer and 8 RBI, and a great opportunity here for Southview. You're not going to leave him out there. Well, of course they're going to leave him out there. I've got hot dogs to eat. They're, they're <laughs> gonna have, we're going to have the longest inning humanly possible. And, you know, by the time we get in between innings, A, they'll be cold, or B, Teresa will have eaten them all. <laughs> <laughs> They're good. Teresa Newhoff says thumbs up to the Pipe Yard hot dogs here, and thanks to Randy Rennick for running those up to us. And Joe, you even get one here in between innings. I've Great. Saved it for you. I thank you. Thank you very much. Chris Garcia comes up. Base is loaded. Nobody out. Saints are down four, and that one's fouled off into the screen 0 and 1. Edwin Ortiz awaits on deck. Sean Buckholtz trying to work out of a big jam here in the top of the fifth. Pitch, that one is inside, one and one. I'm sorry, it's a called strike. It's 0-2, I apologize. No balls, two strikes. Swing and a miss and a huge strikeout for Buckholtz. Out number one, Joe. Boy, he chased it, that one. That was... Garcia struck out for the second time, and that's five strikeouts now for Buckholtz. And Edwin Ortiz will come up. Edwin is 0 for 2. He was a strikeout victim in the first, and he popped out to the first baseman, Cameron Zatala, in the third. And there is a called strike. It's 0-1. So Buckholtz trying to work out of this jam. Bases loaded, one out in the top of the fifth. Saints with a rally, trailing six to two. That one's inside. It evens the count at one and one. Cameron Bryant's at third. Corey Martinez at second. Michael Rosario at first for the Saints. Bryant was hit by a pitch. Martinez walked, and Rosario had a bunt single. That one swung on a miss. Out in front is Buckholtz, one and two. Ryan Valentine awaits on deck. The 1-2 offering. 
That one's outside two and two. Feldkamp with a good job of stabbing that one. There's a lot of foul territory here, Joe. If that ball gets away from a catcher, I would think a run would easily score. Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. Here's the 2 2. And there's a called strike three on Edwin Ortiz. Base is still loaded, now two out. So now Ryan Valentine comes up. He's 0 for 2. He was a strikeout victim once. The top of the order for Southview tonight has not been productive. The first three hitters so far are 0 for 8 with five strikeouts. Robert Perkins awaits on deck. He's 2 for 2. You got a pinch hurry here for Valentin? Yep, yeah, we do. We have Brandon Four is batting. Brandon Four is batting for Valentin. Left-hand batter look, takes a look at ball one. Four on the season. Batting 344. Pitch that one's hit foul into the screen. Brandon has 11 hits, eight singles, three doubles, 344 average, eight RBIs on the season for Brandon Four. Buckholtz comes set, the 1 1 pitch. That's outside 2 and 1. Brandon is a senior. Brandon 4, F O O R. Pinch hitting here in the fifth inning. Feldkamp will come out and talk to Buckholtz. Big spot here for Southview, down 6 to 2, with the bases loaded and nobody out to start the inning, to now having the bases loaded and two out. They need a base hit in the worst way here. That one's lifted foul into the screen. It will even the count at two and two. Robert Perkins with those shin guards on on deck, hoping to take them off and get a chance to bat here in the fifth. That would mean good things for Southview if he steps up. Buckholtz, one strike away from getting out of this one. Swung on and missed for strike three. Buckholtz gets out of the jam. And for the Saints, they get no runs, no hits, one error, or I should say one hit, no errors. Three were left after four and a half innings of play. Our score, it is Admiral Kick six, Southview two. You're watching High School Baseball on WLCS TV 20. Real education means great teaching. Professors with real world experience who care. It means great jobs to recent graduates. And being prepared for a great paying career. That's why we hire LCCC graduates. Low tuition, flexible classes, and LCCC credits transfer. LCCC is a great value. Some of the best people you meet have something in common. Lorain County Community College and the University Partnership. Real education gets real results. Bottom of the fifth inning for the Admirals, they will send up Matt Comer, Matt Toth, and Cody Buckholtz, the 9-1 and 2 hitters. Admirals out in front, 6-2. We have a Evan Nieto in his second inning of relief on the mound for Southview. Pitch swung on and missed to Comer. Nieto did a good job coming in last inning, Joe. And uh, after Admiral King had scored two, holding them right there. That one's going to be lifted into short left center field. Racing out is the shortstop. And making the put out is Ryan Valentin for out number one. And first year coach definitely knew his team. Uh, Bases loaded, nobody out. I, I was sure they were going to change it, but he left them out there, and uh, uh, he got three consecutive outs without uh, giving up a run. It was a big, uh, it was a big opportunity for Southview, and uh, King held them in check. Now coming up is Matt Toth. Toth today is 
one for two. He also walked, tripled and scored in the first, walked in the second, flew out to left field in the fourth inning. Nieto's pitch to Toth is outside for ball one. Nobody on one out here in the bottom of the fifth. Admiral King out front six to two. Pitch that one's going to be lifted into left center field over the head of the shortstop Valentin Ortiz will come up with the ball. That's a single for Matt Toth. He's two for three. And now we'll have Cody Buckholtz coming up. Cody has scored a couple of runs today. He's 0 for 3. He's reached twice on air. Buckholtz came in batting 365 with 13 RBIs. Brian Corey, once again, the Lorraine City Schools Athletic Director, good enough to join us here. How's that pink lemonade going down there, oh, Coach? It's wonderful. Tell you what, it's this turnout is just unbelievable. Everybody's having a great time. Uh, I don't think uh, anybody expected uh, 650 people. I mean, that, that really exceeded all of our expectations. The pitch, that one's going to be hit foul down the line. I'm sure a lot of people getting a chance to see the ballpark for the first time. Also, uh, with the two teams playing so well and the rivalry that it is in, in the good weather and everything else, it kind of just made it a perfect Friday evening. Oh, I agree. And I can't tell you how many people came up to me and uh, just basically in awe. Uh, you know, first time out here, hadn't had a chance yet to, to see the ballpark. Just uh, couldn't believe how unbelievable it is. Runner at first, one out. The pitch to Cody Buckholtz. That's high. Robert Perkins comes up with it, two and one. So you've had an opportunity to kind of mingle through the crowd tonight and talk with a lot of the people. I'm sure you've gotten a lot of positive comments and feedback. Oh, there's no doubt about it. And I tell you what, you know, it's this was the, the perfect venue to get some some people out to watch a game that have never been to a, uh, a high, high school, school game, game better or less sure. than Admiral King Southview game. The pitch by Nieto is a curveball. It's going to be hit down to third. Coming up with it is Feliciano. The throw to first in time for out number two. So the out goes 5-3. And I would think in the future, you know, I'm sure these will be something you, you talk about and look at, but I would think from time to time in the future that each team will play here at Pipe Yard As Park many times as they'll have us. Gotcha. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I think, you know, again, talking to, to some of the people here, you get some people out that, that aren't necessarily uh, – uh, individuals that come out and watch a lot of high school games and you know just like a few people said they were shocked uh, as to the quality of, of baseball that both teams are playing and uh, uh, they're really enjoying themselves. Ball will be hit to short the throw to first in time nice job of digging that out uh, over there Brandon for the first baseman coming up and make a nice scoop for the out so the out goes 6-3 and for the Admirals in the bottom of the fifth inning, no runs. There was one hit, no errors, and one left. We played five innings of baseball. It's 6-2 Admiral King over Southview on WLCS TV 20. Your lawnmower needs serviced. Your snowblower doesn't work. Your riding mower needs repaired. Who are you going to call? To avoid all this frustration and for no mower worries, call Mark Furman Mobile Mower Service at 315-0250. Mark Furman Mobile Mower Service makes good old-fashioned house calls. Most services done on-site at your home when it's convenient for you. He's been servicing the area's power equipment needs for over 30 years. Servicing most makes, including Sears, MTD Yard Machines, Briggs & Stratton, and other major name brands. Remember, for no mower worries and for fast, experienced professional service, call Mark Furman Mobile Mower Service at 315-0250. Top of the sixth inning, it'll be Robert Perkins, Eric Feliciano, Justin Miller, the four, five, and six hitters. Brandon Four is now at first base for Southview, and Corey Martinez, who was the first baseman, went over to shortstop. So that was a good throw and play by Corey Martinez to end the last inning. And that pitch is going to hit Robert Perkins, and he'll get down to first base. Robert now still having a perfect night at the plate. Two for two with two singles, a run scored, and he was just hit by a pitch. 
Now, is it just me or, you know, you guys had a better angle here watching a lot of the game than I did over here on the side, but these guys aren't even trying to get out of the way of these balls. It seems like there's been at least a couple balls that have been thrown uh, inside that these guys are leaning into a little bit, at least from the angle South that I have. Southview needs base runners, and I think they're being very unselfish. I agree. Yeah, it has Being unselfish, <laughs> they tough. need base runners late in the game, and you get on any way you can. Uh, there's some tough kids, man, because I tell you what, Buckles throws uh, baseball pretty hard for you to just lean in on those. I wouldn't stand in there. <laughs> no, I wouldn't either. Feliciano up with a runner on first, nobody out, and he takes a look at a call strike, he evens the count at one and one. Again, Brian Corey, athletic director with the Lorraine City Schools, joining us for this inaugural high school game at Pipe Yard Park. A special evening here for the two city schools, Admiral King and Southview, to play in. Swung on a missed strike, too. I think somewhat lost just because of everything going on tonight is the fact that each team is having such a great year, Brian. And again, we've talked about it, but uh, 7 0 in the league for Southview, 5 or for King, 5 and 1 for Southview. Oh, tremendous job. And I tell you what, uh, Brad Turner's from Southview and John Acasey from uh, Admiral King, uh, both coaches have done tremendous jobs with these kids. I mean, watching them the first game of the year up until this point, uh, seen a lot of improvement and uh, in all the right ways. These guys are getting ready for tournament time, and I feel good about what they're capable of doing. Justin Miller up after Eric Feliciano strikes out for the first out of the sixth inning. One on and one out. Southview down four. Cameron Bryant awaits on deck. Sean Buckholtz has gone the entire way in his sixth inning of work, giving up just the two runs so far. Having yeah, a good evening here. The pitch. There's a called strike. Evens the count at one and one. Of course, the spring sports season well underway as we're about a month away from school wrapping up. Pitch outside two and one. Both teams involved in boys and girls track. Also softball. When Brian was with us last year, tell us a little bit about that fifth and sixth grade football. I wanted to ask you a little bit more about that. Here's the two one pitch. That's high and outside three and one. Yeah, again, you were telling us you're looking for coaches and volunteers and, and people, if they are interested in, in getting involved in any way with that, what, what do they do, Brian? Oh, the best thing to do is just give me a call in my office. As of right now, I'm, I'm taking names of individuals, uh, you know, calling me at my office at 233-2288. Um, let me know, what, you know exactly how involved you want to be. I know some individuals said that they'd like to volunteer coaching some other individuals so they'd like to volunteer doing other things like holding down markers during games and sure things of the sort so I mean we're definitely uh, looking for people that, that want to work with our kids and uh, we had an elementary basketball league for the fifth and sixth grade uh, this past winter at uh, 42 teams Wow between the boys and the girls holy man uh, five yeah 520 kids it was it was pretty impressive wow. uh, Went all day on Saturday, played games on Saturdays, practiced at their respective elementary schools during the week. Um, and, uh, you know, I, as a result, I, I saw unbelievable improvement from the first to, to, to last week with those kids, you know, with their first, basically their first experience playing organized basketball. Justin Miller called strike three. He strikes out. Second strikeout of the inning, ninth overall for Buckholtz. And now Cameron Bryant comes up with a runner at first and two out in the top of the sixth. So Southview just with four outs remaining here, trailing six to two, trying to get a rally going here in the sixth. But Buckholtz, when he's been in trouble, has been able to get that strikeout. That one's outside, two and oh. Southview scored their two runs back in the second inning. He had a, a single by Perkins. Sacrifice bunt Feliciano, a single by Miller, and a single by Cameron Bryant brought in the two runs. There's a called strike, two and one. Cameron Bryant, the designated hitter, came in batting 237. He's one for one. He was also hit by a pitch. That one's outside. It goes to three and one. So at first base is Robert Perkins with two outs here in the top of the sixth. And Brian Corey telling us 655 people here at Pipe Yard Park in Lorraine to check out this ball game. 
That one was fouled off into the crowd. Goes to three and two. You've seen Joe Bach and his crew with Don Jacobin and Bob Schlumbaker taking the uh, photos for you. And Don't forget about Mike Q. He's here with the camera. There you go. Taking uh, photographs. Uh, these guys do a great job of getting these kids exposed, not only not only in the city of Lorraine, but they've done a great job working with me, putting some things together to, for colleges also. Cameron uh, Bryant just walks. It'll bring Corey Martinez up. And that's got to be I mean, that's important. That's, that's well, huge. I, you know, I've had a lot of college coaches. When I used to send the films out that Joe and those guys used to do, um, how great of a benefit it was to the college coaches because they can watch the game. You know, don't lose sight of the fact that uh, these guys are watching players that they're they're seeing for the first time. So to have somebody doing play by play, you know, announcing who guy who the guy is with the ball well, and it helps, you know yeah. it, it it makes a big difference and and uh, gives an opportunity for them to see a quality film versus uh, the stuff that I used to send those guys four or five sure, years ago. Sure. Corey Martinez comes to the plate. Count is even at one and one. Junior first baseman. He's 0 for 1, walked in the fifth, was safe with the in the second inning, reached on an error by the left fielder. That one swung on a miss to 1 and 2. How has the transition for you going to athletic director been, Brian, overall? Has it basically been what you thought it would be? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, obviously it was difficult to walk away from the classroom and coach. And, uh, uh, you know, my major concern going in was that I wasn't going to have as much contact with the kids. But really, I, I have had a a lot more contact than what I thought. I, I'm trying to be as proactive and as hands-on as possible so I can keep uh, in, that interaction with the, the, the kids at every level. Fielder's choice uh, by Martinez for the third out, and that will do it in the sixth inning for Southview. As going in hard to second base was Cameron Bryant, and Bryant, the designated hitter, he is, is hurt. They're gonna take a look at Cameron. Hopefully, he'll be okay. For Southview in the sixth inning, there were no runs, no hits. There was uh, a man hit and uh, a walk, and uh, nobody left. After five and a half innings of play, it's Admiral King 6, Southview 2. You're watching WLCS TV 20. I get people involved in saving the environment. That's why I volunteer. When I teach computer skills, I help kids succeed in school. That's why I volunteer. I help to raise awareness about the hazards of tobacco use. That's why I volunteer, to make a difference. If you know middle or high school students who make a difference by doing volunteer work, have them ask their school principals about applying for a Prudential Spirit of Community Award, or encourage them to call 1-888-450-9961. Lorraine School Employees Credit Union, 4459 Oberlin Avenue, Lorraine. If you're an employee of the Lorraine Board of Education or an employee's family member, you're eligible for the lowest rates, the best products, and the friendliest service and banking with Lorraine School ECU. Speak with us about a membership today and start reaping the rewards of membership with Lorraine School ECU. Phone 440-282-4600. Bottom of the sixth inning for the Saints. They lead it 6-2. to two. It'll be J.T. Feldkamp, Colin Wright, Chad Hall, the scheduled hitters for uh, the Admirals, the four, five, and six hitters. Feldkamp has had quite uh, an athletic career at Admiral King High School. Right-hand batting catcher awaits the pitch from Evan Nieto. And there's a called strike at a 1-1. Three-sport athlete, that's rare today. Football, basketball, baseball. You know, very good in all lot. three. Yep. Nieto with the long pause, and here's the pitch. That's high and outside one and one. And uh, Joe Bach was telling me that uh, JT got a, a nice award last night at the uh, Lorraine Hall of Fame festivities. Yeah, well deserving uh, the Uland Award at the Hall of Fame banquet. Uh, He's a kid that, that's accomplished a lot throughout his high school career, not only athletically, but academically also, being ranked in the top 10 in his class. And uh, terrific kid that comes from a tremendous family. Two balls, one strike to count as JT leads off the home half of the sixth inning. And there is a pitch that uh, is low, it's three and one. Get you a little closer here. 
can tell that Joe doesn't direct me every day. I don't know what he was doing. I thought he was sending signs. <laughs> I wasn't sending sure. I signs he was, of the Saints. Thought he was pointing up to the gods. Or... I don't know what he wanted. <laughs> thought he thought we had another hot dog up here for. Him. That one's ball four. Gets away from Perkins, but he quickly scampers down there to get it. So Feld Camp is safe at first. See one of the people in attendance today is uh, one of our mayoral candidates, Tony Krushenko. I see him uh, regularly in attendance uh, to our baseball games. Uh, act very active uh, with athletics within the community, especially baseball with Lorraine Youth and also uh, supporting the high schools. And it's just been a, really, it's been a perfect night here at Pipe Yard Park. And I'm, I'm sure people that, are, that came here tonight maybe hadn't been here yet. Uh, it will not be their last time. They will continue to come and enjoy this. Uh, oh, there's no facility. doubt about it. I mean, it, you know, and, and the good thing too is, you know, it's still a tight game, and yep, uh, you know, anything can happen, obviously, in baseball. And these guys are going to stick around until the end to, to see how it all finishes out. Colin Wright now steps in. Colin, third baseman, is two for three tonight. At 20 RBIs coming in, he has three tonight. He has 23 now. Just a couple behind Feldkamp. The Admirals hit the ball. They have a team average of 327. Definitely done a good job uh, offensively this season. Yeah, and very improved uh, defensively from the beginning of the year. I know they had a rough start defensively to start the year, but I'll tell you what, the last seven or eight games, they've really uh, stepped it up and corrected a lot of those mistakes and improved. And just like in any sport, defense is sometimes overlooked but so critical and, and very important in baseball if you're going to be successful. Oh, if, yeah, if no this, doubt about yeah, it. If Admiral King goes on to win this one, part of the reason will be the errors that Southview committed. Swung on a miss there by Colin Wright on that off-speed pitch. Nieto has done a good job coming in. You know, the left-handed relief pitcher has really shut down the Admiral so far. He hasn't given up any runs in relief. Yeah, he, he's one of those pitchers. He's not going to overpower you, but he's going to come in and throw a lot of junk at you and, and make it difficult to hit the ball. Yep, and just throw strikes and make them hit them. Exactly. Have some confidence in your defense. He comes set, looks to Perkins for the call. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Curve ball is swung out. That's, that's that junk I was talking about. <laughs> right, trying to wait back, trying, 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 and just couldn't time it up. One ball, two strikes. It's Sometimes funny. that's the most frustrating when you have to deal with a guy that's going to throw all that stuff at you. That's going to move left, move right, all over the place. I tell you what, when I was when I played baseball, that was I would assume have a guy throw 80 miles an hour and try to throw it by me, then have to deal with that all game. Agreed. That one's high and outside, two and two. Yeah, there are no style points, Brian. They just ask you if you got them out or not. <laughs> two balls, two strikes, nobody out. Bottom of the sixth inning. Colin Wright is up. JT Feldkamp is at first. The Admirals with two in the first, two in the third, two in the fourth. Southview scored two in their second inning. And it's 6-2 Admiral King. Pitch that one's going to be lifted down the third base line in foul territory. Drifting over it? and oh. running out of room. It went out of play as Eric Feliciano. He went all the way to the fence. He simply ran out of room. Is that when the wind took it and it went to foul territory out of play? Feliciano gave it a good effort. He was right up against the fence. You know, we also done a good job here tonight. I think kept it crowded and having a good time is your main man here playing the tunes. You know, between the at bats. Oh and yeah, doing oh a good yeah. Job. Well, I know that was man. one of the major concerns done, done sound, of the done kids a great job. the past couple of days. Was they knew uh, they knew that they were going to be able to hear a song, you know, in between <laughs> when they were at bats when they came up. So uh, their major concern was figuring out what song it was going to be. I think uh, going to the tribe games. Yes. You know, it was probably one of their dreams to have their own song to be able to come to bat to, and That's they funny. got their dream. <laughs> <laughs> they, they got it, buddy. Well, hey, you got to have your priorities. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. That's and good. You know, only thing missing is slider running around on the dugout. <laughs> <laughs> two balls, two strikes as Wright steps back in. The junior third baseman came in batting 448. Pitch that one's going to be ripped into left field. It's a solid base hit. Ortiz comes up with it, and that will keep Feldkamp at second. So the first two Admirals are aboard here in the bottom of the sixth. And now Chad Hall will come up. Defensively for Southview, there's been a few changes. 
Brandon Four is at first base now. Michael Rosario is at second. At short is Corey Martinez, who was the first baseman earlier. Eric Feliciano is at third. Left to right field, Edwin Ortiz, Justin Miller, Chris Garcia. Evan Nieto in relief of Cameron Castro on the mound, and Robert Perkins behind the plate. Chad Hall comes up. He's one for one today. Well, I did get the report. Um, unfortunately, uh, our girls uh, lost a tough one to Mentor today, so it puts them in second place uh, in the conference, and they're going to look forward to, to tournament time. But uh, I couldn't be prouder of the effort that they put forth so far this year, right now being 11 and 2. Speaking of Admiral King. Uh, yes, the King yes, Girls, yes, 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 okay. Admiral King. And that one is a uh, pitch is a ball, 1 0. Admirals have really had a good, uh, couple of good softball seasons. I know last year I had the opportunity mm -hmm. to watch them, and, and they've really, really improved. Oh, yeah. Last year they did win. The, actually, they went undefeated in the conference last year. Okay. And I know, uh, you know one of the concerns this year was obviously men are they returned a lot of quality players uh, from last year's team. And uh, they lost a tough one today, but. Uh, I'm sure they'll, they'll learn for it and be better because of it pitch. come the tournament. High ball three. I would think the spring sports season two for an athletic director, you know, it, it's unique. You've got weather issues and rescheduling and makeups and, and, and all sorts of things that you really don't get in other times of the year. And, and I think for the athletic director, I think the spring season has to be, you know, a, a lot of work from that perspective. Oh, uh, it's extremely difficult. I mean, you can go two weeks without playing, and the next thing you know, you play seven, eight games in a row. It's, it's, uh, it's tough and you know it's, it's difficult on the coaches especially because obviously you know you, you can only play so many games in a row without getting quality practices in but sometimes you don't have a choice you, right. know, you have to do what you have to do to get the games in and uh, for example the so uh, soft in terms of softball with uh, Southview uh, they had a stretch of almost two weeks without a game and then wow. now they're, they're just playing one after another swing and a miss the count is full to Chad Hall and Rob Polinski up with Brian Corey from Lorraine City Schools, the athletic director. Joe Bach also on the cameras tonight, offering some commentary throughout the evening as well. Glad you could join us for this high school baseball game between Admiral King and Southview. Pitch, that one's ripped into left field, foul and out of play. Count remains full. And the kids will give it a chase out there. That's always good stuff. <laughs> Chad Hall will step back in. Chad, just a sophomore, with a homer and 11 RBI on the season. And that's a good at bat. He takes a walk, ball four. And you wonder if Nieto may be tiring a little bit. He came in back in the fourth inning. And the bases are now loaded. Brad Turnus comes out. And I think we're going to see a pitching change here for Southview, possibly. We'll wait and see. As uh, Nieto is going to go into, uh, I believe it's right field, and that would mean, uh, if I'm not mistaken, maybe Chris Garcia will come on to the mound and be the pitcher for Southview. Indeed, he will. And while he takes his warm ups, we'll take a timeout. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. There's nobody out, the bases are loaded. Saints trails Admiral King 6-2. We're back after this. I'm Bob Costas, and I've been broadcasting sports for a long time. Much of what I do is ad-libbed, but still one of the most important aspects of my job is being able to write. Narrations, essays, commentaries. It's essential to express those thoughts and concepts clearly and concisely. Good writing is essential for almost any career. And with today's advanced technology, the National Commission on Writing reports that the need to write well has never been more important. Writing is everybody's business. Chris Garcia will be the new pitcher on the mound for Southview. He says thank you very much as he gets to come into a bases loaded, nobody out jam in the bottom <laughs> of the six. Tom Sigmund will be the first batter he gets to go against. And Mr. Garcia on the year is 0-1 with a 3.50 ERA. First pitch is high for ball one. He has pitched in six innings, given up three hits, three earned runs, walked nine, struck out six. Okay, the bases are loaded with no outs. Uh, what directive uh, do you think that the hitter's been given? 
I don't think he's swinging at anything right at this point. He's taking a strike. I don't think if he swings at something, I would be shocked. Infield in, and he swings and misses strike one, one and one. <laughs> Well, oh, Tom Sigmund has go. a 17-game hitting streak. <laughs> well, yeah, okay, okay, and okay. And the Admirals okay, are up 6-2, okay. to two, so maybe if it was the other way, yeah, you're yeah, yeah. down. So they're being aggressive. The infield is definitely in. The play is at the plate. And Tom Sigmund awaits the 1-1 pitch from Garcia. Garcia. Uh-oh, uh -oh, there you go. Base hit. Ortiz will come up with it, but two runs are going to score, and Admiral King leads it 8-2. to two. Throw comes home but not in time as the Admiral score two. Two RBI uh, single for Tom Sigmund. He has three RBIs on the game and two base hits. Scoring was JT Feldkamp and Colin Wright. And we have getting down to second base, Chad Hall. So now it's eight to two, Admiral King in the bottom of the sixth inning. Looks like Cameron Zantala will be pinch hit for. And I don't know if I got an Admiral King roster no, numerically, so I don't know if I'm going to know who this gentleman is. Um, Number eight. Joe, any ideas? Well, seen? if we listen close here, we'll be maybe we'll. Well, Jim Allen, uh, the public address announcer, said who it was, but I couldn't hear it over the music. <laughs> Brian's going to go help us out. All right. OK, Miles Jones. Thanks, Brian. So Miles Jones is the pinch hitter here for the Admiral King Admirals. As they lead by six, he'll come in in the bottom of the eighth inning. Jones. Chris Garcia on the mound, looks back. Miles Jones so far is uh, batting 304, and the young man has five RBIs on the season. So Miles Jones gets it at bat with two on and nobody out here in the bottom of the sixth. Garcia throws back to second, and getting back in time is Chad Hall. So it's still nobody out in the bottom of the sixth inning. The first four batters have all reached safely. We've had two walks and two singles. Two runs have scored. Garcia comes plateward and Jones takes a look at a called strike. It's one and one. So the Saints, if you're looking to the top of the seventh inning and they're last at bat, they will have the nine, one and two hitters. Michael Rosario, Chris Garcia, and Edwin Ortiz are the scheduled batters for Southview in the top of the seventh. And they are going to have a lot of work to do down six at this point. Well, one thing you can always say, the game of baseball is different than any other sport where anything can happen. And, you know, South, you experienced that two years ago uh, against Illyria in that. the tournament. Yep. Had, Had the game won. Yep. yep. The only sport, I think, where time is not involved at all. There's no time, there's no clock. Especially here with these lights. <laughs> we, can, <laughs> we can be playing until midnight. Well, Brian, don't say it. I mean, I love being here next to you, but I did have a couple I don't other think, things. I don't think these guys would be too upset with the concession stands going for the next two hours. There, there were a couple things I wanted to do. I tonight. got plenty of tape, Rob. <laughs> there you go. There's going to be a bunt by Jones. Garcia comes off the mound, throws to first. Nice sacrifice bunt by Miles Jones. So that's the first out of the inning, and he does his job. Gets Hall to third and Sigmund to second. And now Chris Mills will pinch hit for Matt Comer. So Chris Mills coming up here for the Admiral King Admirals in the bottom of the sixth inning. It'll be his first opportunity to bat today. Chris with a 244 batting average, and he has 12 RBIs on the season. Coming into the ball game, the Admirals with 131 RBIs, their opponents with just 25. So again, they they definitely hit the baseball, no doubt about it. Oh yeah, very impressive. Speaking of hitting the baseball, uh, I picked up the edge this morning, uh, reading the journal, and I saw that uh, J.T. Feldkamp's leading uh, 
the area in batting average. Great. Which is, yeah, 563 uh, coming into this ball game. And <laughs> we had mentioned earlier, Brian, I, I believe when you weren't on that, he has thrown out at one point this season, threw out 11 out of 12 base runners. He's got a right. Unreal. I know. And, you know, it's funny, too. You know, you watch him in uh, batting practice and kids rifling him uh, from his knees, which uh, you don't see too many high school players no. do. Southview defense on the infield. They are in at the cut of the grass. The play is at the plate with runners at second and third and one out. Pitch Mills looks at a pitch high. It's 2-0. and oh. Two runs are already in in the inning. Admiral King now leading 8-2. to two. The Admirals, the only run, the innings they didn't score were in the second and the fifth. Mills takes some practice swings in the right-handed batter's box. Garcia with the pitch, a called strike on the corner, two and one. Garcia looking into Perkins for the sign. He'll come set. And that one's off the corner, it's three and one. Awaiting on deck, we'll be back to the top of the order. It'll be Matt Toth, where the junior center fielder has had a good ball game. He has been on board three out of four times with a couple of hits and a walk. Swung on, Mills just tipped that to stay alive. Count is full. As the uh, school year comes to an end, you know, some of the responsibilities you have as you're closing out the school year and then, and then you're looking ahead to the next one, uh, what are the, you know, what does that present to you? What are you doing then? Well, I mean, time? you know, one of the big things that I'm working on right now is, is trying to prepare and organize uh, all the different elementary programs. You know, I'm real big on that. The foundation has to start when the kids are in third and fourth grade. Uh, we can't wait until these kids get into junior high. We've done a lot of different things with uh, just this past year with volleyball, uh, basketball, even golf with, with our elementary kids. And, you know, coming into to this year, we want to expand a little bit. Obviously, we talked about the football. Um, I would like to do more with wrestling also um, to get these kids started younger. And, uh, you know, as the athletic director, obviously, you know, we, we deal with middle school and high school. Well, you're literally opening up a whole new program when you're going to the elementary. Yep. And, and such to where you have probably three times of what you deal with at the high school level total because, no, obviously, you know, at the elementary level, you're not cutting anybody. Every kid makes the team. Um, you're trying to give the kids a, a fun, exciting, enjoyable experience but where they're also learning the basic skills and fundamentals needed to, for them to be more, more prepared when they get into junior high. So I mean that's uh, right. that's that's a lot in its uh, a lot in itself. I mean, uh, but but we, the way things got off this past year, I'm really excited to uh, where we're going to be two three years from now. Chris Mills strikes out. Matt Toth just hit by a pitch, so the bases are now loaded with two outs, and Cody Buckholtz comes up. Garcia hits Buckholtz, and that's going to drive a run in, and that will make it a nine to two game. So back-to-back -back hitters have been hit for Admiral King. Going down to second is Toth. Hall scores. And getting the third is Tom Sigmund. So three runs in in the inning, and it's 9-2, to two, and Brad Turner comes back out. Because now, with it being 9-2, to two, if the Admirals were to get these three runs in that are on the bases, that would be a mercy rule 10-run game. Turner's coming out to talk to his team. And I think he's taking Garcia out and will bring in a new pitcher here in the bottom of the sixth inning. So it's been a long inning here for the Saints defensively. And after hitting consecutive batters, Brad Turnus will take Garcia out. And uh, he will be making a pitching change. We'll take a timeout. We'll continue with this ball game at Pipe Yard Park when the bottom of the sixth inning. It's 9-2 Southview trailing Admiral King. You're watching baseball on WLCS TV 20. There's a place where a total stranger will give their blood to save your life.
There's a place where someone you never knew will save your child from drowning. A place where people will give you food and shelter after a flood. There's a place where, when you need it most, someone will reach out their hand, put it across your shoulder and say, everything's going to be okay. That place is called America. Where we look out for each other. And it's up to us to keep it that way. When you help the American Red Cross, you help America. Bottom of the sixth inning, Sean Buckholtz coming up. Ray Carrion is the fourth pitcher on the mound now for the night for Southview. And his first pitch is ball one. King with the bases loaded, two outs up nine to two. They've scored three in the inning in the bottom of the sixth. Pitch, that one's going to be hit foul up against the screen, one and one. I want to thank Brian Corey, Lorraine City Schools Athletic Director, joined us a couple of times. Teresa Newhoff with the Morning Journal joined us as well, made this uh, broadcast uh, much more enjoyable. The pitch, that's outside off the plate, two and one. Joe, good job recruiting down there, getting us some help. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Anything's better than listening to me ramble <laughs> on and on incessantly. Well, uh, you do a nice job. Pitch is high and inside, three and one. Love to have you on. Uh, Oh, it's fun. We appreciate it. Inside to Sean Buckholtz, three and one. So Ray Carrion on the mound here, trying to get out of this inning and give Southview an opportunity in the top of the seventh. Three one. That'll be fouled off into the screen. The count is full at three and two. Actually, want to thank you, Joe. You and your crew. You guys do a great job. It's been fun the last few years. You know, working with you guys and. Mostly before, just, you know, you had the opportunity we'd be doing a game at the same time and to really sit and chat, but now I get to kind of know you guys and work with you. It's been an enjoyable experience. We, we do appreciate it. I know Tim and I both uh, always look forward to helping you guys out when we can. Here's the full count offering. That swung out of us for strike three. So the Saints get out of the bottom of the sixth inning, but a huge inning for South for uh, Admiral King. They get three runs, and after six innings, our score, it is Admiral King 9, Southview 2. You're watching high school baseball on WLCS TV 20. I'm Gary Sinise. In the movie Forrest Gump, I played Lieutenant Dan Taylor, a disabled veteran. But being a disabled vet is much more difficult. It often means a life of hardship, loneliness, and pain. You can help by volunteering at your local veteran's hospital. You will brighten a disabled veteran's spirit and remember those who've sacrificed for our freedom. So please get involved and contact the disabled American veterans. Top of the seventh inning, Michael Rosario comes up and he is hit by a pitch by Sean Buckholtz to start the seventh inning. And now Chris Garcia will come up. Top of the seventh inning, Southview trailing Admiral King nine to two. Actually, we've got a pinch hitter. It'll be Ray Carrion batting for the Saints. So Carrion comes up here in the seventh inning. Garcia was 0 for 3. The top three of the lineup for Southview tonight, they've struggled. They were 0 for 9 combined, and that's really made it tough for the Saints to have any rallies uh, when your top three is 0 for 9 with six strikeouts. Yeah, they had some golden opportunities. Uh, I remember the one bases loaded, nobody out. Yep. That pitch is a call or a check swing for a strike. It's one and two to Ray Carrion. Looks like we're going to get a pinch hitter for Edwin Ortiz as well on deck. That one two pitch is high and outside, two and two. Rosario at first, nobody out in the top of the seventh. Southview's last chance down nine to two. Buckholtz trying to get a complete game. That one's lifted to third base, making the put out there is Colin Wright for out number one of the seventh inning. So the Admirals are two outs away. And for the Saints, we have Anthony Browning, a sophomore to pinch hit. 
You know, another nice thing here, Joe, you're seeing a lot of kids late in the game get an opportunity to play on this field, and it has to be a thrill for them, even though this is a 9-2 ball game. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, that's I mean, a chance to get in, chance to play in the field, and, and, and chance to be on TV 20. <laughs> well, there you go. One on, one out in the seventh. That one's off the outside corner, 1-0. Oh. Buck Holtz, two outs away from going to 4-0 oh on the season. Browning takes a look at that one. It's high and inside, 2-0. Oh. On deck is Brandon Four. He came in as a defensive replacement at first base in the fourth inning. There's a called strike. Rob, as nice as this field looks in the day, it, it just looks so much, I mean, at night with the lights and all, it's just I really agree. awesome. No, I, I agree with that. And it, and, and it, that's where it kind of gives you that minor league ballpark feel, you know what I mean, with the, with the lights and the sound, the music going on in the background. Yep. That one's inside the Browning. There have been a lot of hitters from both sides hit tonight. Three and one. That one's lifted. Second base calling for it. That's Cody Buckholtz, and he will make the put out for out number two. Sean Buckholtz has hit three batters tonight. And as I look at the Admiral King lineup, they had three batters that were hit. So we've had six batters hit by pitches here today. That's a, a rarity. You don't hear that very often. And now uh, Brandon Four will step in. The senior struck out in the fifth inning in his only plate appearance. Comes up with a runner at first and two outs. This is the last hope for Southview down nine to two. And there's a called strike on the fastball. So Buckholtz gave up two runs back in the second inning. Worked out of some jams, but uh, he was awfully good tonight. Nine strikeouts. And he's one out away from a complete game win. One ball, one strike. Pitch is high and outside, two and one. Swung on a miss, the count is even at two and two. So now the Saints down to their final strike. As it looks like the Admirals are gonna to improve to 17 and three and go eight though in the league. Southview would drop to 13 and five and five and two in the league. The two two, and that one's gonna be hit into short left field for a base hit and the Saints stay alive. So four with the single, his first hit of the night and Robert Perkins who's been perfect at the plate, the number four hitter will come up. Perkins is two for two with a single, two singles and a run scored. And he was also hit by a pitch in his last uh, at bat. Robert, a senior, had an outstanding ball game. 392 average coming into the game. He's added to that as a homer and 10 RBIs. And he'll try to remain perfect at the plate. And Eric Feliciano on deck hopes to get an opportunity. There's a called strike. The mayor, Craig Fulton, walking here and talking to the crowd. Swung on a miss, strike two. Of course, we had Craig on a couple weeks ago and had a chance to talk to him during the CSU broadcast when they played UW-Milwaukee. No balls, two strikes to Robert Perkins. Buckholtz comes set. The 0-2 pitch, low and outside, one and two. Tell you what, Joe, the two catchers tonight are good between Perkins and JT Feldkamp. Very, very good catchers oh, for both very, these very, ball clubs. Yeah, great range. I agree. Pitch, that one's going to be lifted into right field, coming on to make the play and to put out Tom Sigmund, and that will do it. So Perkins flies out to Sigmund, and Southview got no runs in the seventh inning. They had one hit. There were no errors and two left. Our final score, Lorraine Ambrose King 9, Southview 2.
We'll be back. We'll wrap it up right after this timeout on WLCS TV 20. As you see, both teams come on out to shake hands at home plate and a good sign of sportsmanship between these two, two ball clubs. Uh, King beats them twice in a week. They beat them Monday at Southview and here tonight at Pipe Yard Park in Lorraine. We'll be back right after this. For the people in our armed forces, it's a time of sacrifice, a time of duty. That's why we've joined together to form the Armed Forces Relief Trust to help military families cope with financial and medical emergencies at home. The four military aid societies gave millions last year to cover unexpected medical expenses, child care, and more. But with so many overseas, the need is greater than ever. They're serving us. Let's serve them in return. Welcome back to Pipe Yard Park. Rob Politsky from WEOL Radio AM 930 in Illyria. Coming over to help out tonight with the uh, broadcast, thanks to Joe Bach, uh, did a great job at the home plate uh, camera, also our director and color commentator tonight, thanks to Don Jacobin, third base uh, cameraman, and over at first base, Bob Schlumbaker. Special thanks to Brian Corey, Lorraine City Schools Athletic Director, Teresa Newhoff with the Morning Journal, helping us out with the broadcast. Jim Allen, who you hear on the PA, helping us out as well tonight with uh, some information. We do appreciate it. Admiral King defeats Southview by a score of 9-2 to two for the Admirals. They are 17-3, the best record in Lorraine County, 8-0 and atop the Lake Erie League's Erie Division. For Southview, they dropped to 13-5, 5-2 in the LEL. Interestingly, Southview's two losses in the league, both to Admiral King. They lost Monday night, this past Monday, to Admiral King, and then they lose tonight. For the uh, Admirals, they got uh, two runs in the first, two in the third, two in the fourth, and three in the sixth. For Southview, two runs in the second inning. Sean Buckholz goes the complete game, goes to 4-0 and on the season. Cameron Castro was the tough luck loser. He went three in the third innings. He drops to three and two for Castro. Not his fault, his defense really failed behind him. Castro gave up six hits, six runs, uh, two walks, three strikeouts, hit two batters. But uh, if you look at the uh, box score, Admiral King had nine runs, nine hits, one error, 12 were left. These are unofficial numbers. Southview, two runs, six hits, six errors is the big number for Southview, and they left six. So for Castro, tough luck loser because most of those six errors were when he was in the ball game. For uh, Admiral King, some of the hitting stars, uh, Toth had a triple and a single. He was two for three on the day. Uh, you had... Um, Sean Buckholtz scored a couple of runs. Cody Buckholtz scored two runs. Colin Wright scored two runs. Uh, a lot of offense for the Admiral King Admiral. So again, special thanks to everybody who helped out tonight. Again, our final score from Pipe Yard Park. It was Lorraine Admiral King nine, Lorraine Southview two. You're watching high school baseball. It's been a presentation of Lorraine City Schools Television, WLCS TV 20. This has been a production of Lorraine City Schools, TV 20, WLCS. To purchase a high-quality copy of the program you just viewed, please call Lorraine City Schools Television at 282-8400.